do here is go back, 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 back. And hopefully we are possibly live. Hopefully we are. Good evening everyone, Mike here, Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. It is Saturday the 20th of January 2024. Hopefully you're all having a fantastic day and uh, everything is all good for you. I've got my cup of tea ready, got my knife ready to open some boxes. I think I'm pretty much set up. So, let's see. Uh, can you actually hear me and can you see me? That is quite important. I think the microphone levels look to be okay-ish. We can see and hear you, never mind. And the overhead camera, oh, we've got a bit of lag vision there. Right, let's, uh, let's kill that a minute. Hopefully that is going to be a bit smoother. Yeah, excellent stuff. There we go. Super chat come in from Mick Woods. Thank you very much, Mick Woods, for your £10 super chat. And thank you to Bob and also Jason Woods earlier on the with the £2. Yeah, do the like, whatever. I'll put my hand over it so it's not so bad. For anyone who's got photo sensitivity, let us know now. Let us know now. I'm doing my best. Am I blocking that sufficiently? You get all the super That'll chats, though. Yeah, I think that's enough. We seem to be working, and Mitwood says he's sending this. Actually, why is that now called on the screen? I clicked on that, did I? There we go. Sending this from Raspberry Pi 5. Great tiny little PC. Yeah, I'm really interested actually in those little small uh, computers, tiny computers. When they first came out, the Raspberry Pi was very interesting. I was at the BBC at the time, so I spent some of the BBC's harder and taxpayers' money and uh, bought one and it turned out to be rubbish at the time because I wanted to run PowerPoint presentations on it but it wouldn't it didn't have the power to do it so that was a long long time ago things have improved immensely since then so excellent stuff thank you very much Mick and we'll quickly find the other super chats that we had in already so there's the uh, two pounds from Jason Woods hey disco disco thank you Jason Woods much appreciated is that covering that up sufficiently it's close enough and let's find the other one. Uh, where are we? Ugly Bob. There we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ugly Bob, also for your disco, 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 disco. Four times a charm. Won't be long. There we go. We're done. Let's, let's resume normal programming, if there is such a thing. So, it's, uh, it's been quite a week. I think. Oh, is there another one? Who's that? That's uh, Ugly Bob. Oh, there we go. So, Dooku toilet paper I had for Christmas had to be a failure. <laughs> Sorry. The Sudoku toilet paper I had for Christmas proved to be a failure. I filled it with number twos. Boom, boom. This is a dad joke if I ever heard one. Thank you, Bob. Uh, Jason Wood says a fellow sub, Seen or Sean, passed away on Thursday. Oh, sorry to hear that. Who was that? Sean? Is that one of our subscribers? I did not know who that. I can't think. Of, well, do I know who that is? I probably do, but maybe not. Very sad. Sorry to hear that. <coughs> Let's have a drink. It's very hot in here again. Ugly Bob's, it's Charles Ballard says, Ugly Bob, I'm just leaving that. That's Jan said today, converted PC to Meshify 2. Lovely jubbly. Nicholas Barlow's with us, says good evening everyone. And yeah, it's been a, it's been an interesting week. I'm trying to think, was this the week that the 4070 Super video went out? I think it was. Yes, I think it was. That has actually turned out to be quite good. A lot of you seem to be actually quite interested uh, despite the economic woes that majority of people are facing at the moment which is completely understandable and having to potentially gawk over a 600 pound gpu is probably not in the best taste but um, i was interested to see what the performance was like and actually turned out to be a pretty decent card sadly it does have to go back to msi it was only a loaner so 
don't get to keep it, unfortunately. So everything I said in the video is absolutely 100% genuine and my own thoughts. And I thought it was quite interesting to do it, testing it at 4K and ultra wide, being that that is the sort of resolutions that we're kind of going to be growing into sooner or later. So those were kind of worst case scenarios. And the card actually still did very well, even though the uh, 12 gigabyte limitation, which I'm not entirely convinced it is a limitation, especially with the things like FSR and DLSS, which do reduce that actually massively. Surprising how much difference it makes with that frame scaling and the frame generation and that kind of stuff, how it actually does reduce the need to have absolutely tons of RAM. But if there's older titles which don't support FSR and DLSS, then obviously potentially it can become a problem. But I'm happy to say that in every single game I tested, even though they were all at ultra or extremely high, they all worked and none of them ran out of VRAM, didn't have any VRAM errors or issues. So I think 12 gigs is probably like getting towards that squeeze point in 4K ultra high resolution where it's kind of like, you'd be nice to have that extra four gigabytes on there just to give you that buffer. But again, most people aren't gonna be playing their games at 4K. They're unlikely to be playing at ultra wide. And if you are, the chances are you're probably spending more money on like a 4080 or higher. So I think it was a, a reasonable review. I think I did it justice. It wasn't the typical sort of review that you'd see from your gamers Nexus and Hardware and Box and stuff like that. So I just did what I thought was best at the time. And hopefully it turned out okay. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you haven't watched it, I suggest you watch it at some point. It's actually quite interesting. Uh, Air Missile says the 4070 Founders Edition cards have already been sculpted totally. Yeah, I actually was trying to get hold of a Founders Edition. This is part of my story of woe this week. This week has been full of highs and lows. Uh, most of the highs were towards the beginning of the week and the lows have been at the tail end of the week. The week's just got gradually worse, but hopefully we've come to the kind of the, the, essentially we've scraped the bottom of the barrel and things are now looking up. Hopefully they will be. So yeah, trying to get a Finder's Edition card. Let me know actually in the chat, did any of you manage to get one? If you wanted one that is. Clearly, it's not going to be for everybody, but I actually was uh, genuinely interested, and because of obviously saving up the Christmas pennies and all that kind of stuff, I was seriously looking for a 4070 Super Finders Edition or something which I thought would be of uh, equivocal, uh, equivocal va value, if I can even say it. Someone else's teeth in the game tonight. Uh, but yeah, they sold out basically in about two minutes, I think, if not less than that. Whatever stock was available must have been very, very minimal indeed. Uh, Wally Bob says, I saw a number of 4070s for sale yesterday from MSRP2. Yeah, I did notice the MSI Ventus X2 OC has been available for 579 here in the UK. And I think the Gigabyte, not the Eagle, is it the Eagle? I'm not sure which one it is. One of their triple fan models that was available for basically um, 579 as well. Unfortunately, the MSI card that I reviewed was the Slim X, or Gaming X Slim, I should say. And that seems to have retailed now for around about 640, 650, which is, I think, is a little bit too much of a step over the Founders Edition. Hopefully the card price will come down. I don't think they've been selling in uh, vast numbers. The Founders Edition sold out, but I'm thinking that is probably just down to there being very, very little stock. Although people have said that in America there is still Founders Edition cards available at MSRP if you're shopping at nvidia.com over in the USA. But here in the UK, basically it went from coming soon, coming soon, coming soon, refresh page out of stock. <laughs> so it came and went very quickly, unfortunately. So I think the prices are still gonna be uh, somewhat of an adjustment Actually, funny enough, the uh, the representative from MSI UK, which I've been dealing with, with regard to this video review, his exact words were, prior to the launch, uh, we don't know the exact price. And this is actually MSI UK. They, they, were just, they did not know for sure what the exact price was going to be. And this was about a week before the video was going to go out. Because I said, like, it's a great card. I love it. It's, it's fantastic. But I need to know roughly what the price is going to be to kind of justify buying a card like this over your Finders Edition cards or the MSRP cards. Now clearly the performance is better. Around about 10 to 15% faster, possibly 5% in some games, but definitely a performance boost over the Finders Edition or the MSRP cards due to that higher clock speed. 
but I, yeah, I didn't know what the price was. So they did say roughly it's going to be about six fifty thereabouts, and they kind of pretty much nailed it. I think in terms of the pricing over the existing one, there is a lot to like about it. It is a, a very nice looking card, and actually the black edition I kind of prefer. And I'm almost tempted to start going back to doing black builds. I think I'm not sure why. I think I'm getting a bit sick and tired of the white PC cases, even though we're going to be looking at another one very shortly. So yeah, it was a very interesting thing. So me being me, slightly impulsive at times, or generally someone who just overthinks things drastically, I thought, sod it, I'm going to go over to <coughs> overclockers.co.uk here in the UK and see what they've got available. Unfortunately, for those of you that are watching, um, there's a company in the UK, box.co.uk, which has been very good for uh, getting PC bits and pieces at pretty decent prices and sometimes like ridiculously low prices. They are part of the, well, now they are part of the Tactus group of companies, which includes uh, CCL, Chill Blast, and a few other kind of more boutique PC manufacturers. But it does appear that box.co.uk have applied for administration or are entering administration. So it looks like box is coming to the end of their days. They are still trading. So obviously if you are watching this and you're potentially thinking of doing some shopping and you are considering box.co.uk or potentially even CCL or Chill Blast, I would kind of maybe, I don't know, just have a, a serious think about what you're doing. Potentially things could get nasty. We are at the moment going to be heading into that period here in the UK at least where between kind of January and March, April, the kind of PC sales are pretty much at their lowest and the uh, the economy isn't looking particularly strong at the moment. So potentially any one of those companies as part of the Tactus Group could potentially also fail as well if they're essentially they've invested 100 million to buy box.co.uk which allegedly was a uh, overly adjusted or inflated price. They overvalued the company. Tactus Group are suing the previous owners of Box.co.uk for the alleged infringement of the value. So yeah, there's a, a lot of potentially uh, bad things could happen there. So just wanted to give you all a shout out and say, like, if you are considering buying from any of the Tactus Group companies, just bear that in mind. I personally would maybe consider what I'm buying and where the warranties lie, whether it's with the company, whether it's with a third party, etc. So yeah, just a heads up on that one there. Oh God, sorry, Chris, <laughs> you should be fine. Um, I guess whoever buys them out or bails them out or whatever happens, I'm guessing the warranties will be either honored by them. Failing that, if you've Maybe purchased, banner. if you, oh, sorry, oh yeah, sorry. If, um, if you've purchased things from them, if you've used like PayPal or your credit card, your credit card's gonna have some kind of fallback mechanism as well, which is kind of the reason why people use credit cards, not only because they can get money Never in advance, out. but generally there are some levels of protection there as well. So yeah, do bear that in mind. Uh, G-Zones in the house, how are you doing? Stuart Cleary as well? Where is he? In what chat are you in? Live? Uh, yeah, he's only just come in. Kaiser Solo, how are you doing? Uh, he says, why PC cases are so 2023? Yeah, they are. You think 2024 would be the year of the rainbow case, the way things are going? You never know. Don't rule it out. I've seen rainbow stormtroopers, so anything's possible. Uh, Wally Bob says, the super series will be low in stock to keep the prices high. I think to some extent that will be, uh, that will be a thing. David Underhill says, NVIDIA will not sell the Founders Edition here. Uh, for those of you that don't know where David is, he's actually in Australia, so heads up for that. Uh, what else was he? Oh yeah, so back to the story. So yeah, couldn't get a, a 4070 Super. And being that I just tested one, I thought, well, maybe I should just try something else altogether. And despite my best judgment, which normally I listen to, I have my little internal antenna go in and it's like, Sometimes when I'm going to buy something, I deep down I know it's like it's going to be a bad idea. And you know what it's like when you pull the trigger on buying something, you either get that instant regret or you get that feeling of like, okay, this is going to be fine or this is going to turn out well. For me, generally, if I buy something and I think to myself, that's pretty cool, that's going to turn out well, it's generally the opposite. If I buy something and I immediately get buyer's remorse or I feel sick to my stomach because I spent money, 
that is normally a good sign. Now in this particular instance, I bought a MBA or made by AMD, a RX 7800 XT to replace my RX 6800 in my video editing PC because I couldn't get a 4070 Super. So as we've seen from a lot of the reviews and the media that the RX 7800 XT has been the kind of comparison card. And in terms of gameplay, it's generally been kind of heads or tails who wins in general because obviously a bit of extra RAM on the AMD card. Some titles are optimized for AMD, some are optimized for Nvidia. So you kind of get that back and forward, back and forward. Now I do most of my work on that PC, including video editing. So video editing is a very strong point and Adobe, Prem uh, yeah, Adobe Premiere Pro loves CUDA cores. It's basically, they I don't know what they did with Nvidia, but they kind of hooked them in and it really does use those CUDA cores to their best advantage. Even so, I still went ahead and bought this graphics card. This is the uh, Sapphire MBA RX 7800 XT, and I bought it for 479 UK pounds. I paid a little bit extra for shipping because I wanted it for today. Because you know, it's like you just, when you want something, you just want it, you're gonna have it. So I paid a little bit extra to get the next day shipping. And it arrived today, and I, for some reason, I didn't feel overly motivated to install the graphics card which is a weird thing. Normally it's like, oh, new shiny, get it in, see how it works. I didn't have that feeling. And maybe that should, that again, should have been my spidey senses kicking in saying that this is just, this isn't gonna work out as intended. So installed the graphics card, installed the drivers, did the DDU, all that kind of stuff. And first thing I thought I'd do, I actually did a rendering run of the video I'd just made the day before on the system and timed it and it came in at 7 minutes 41 seconds to render the video. This is with the old RX 6800. Put in the RX 7800 XT, and the first thing I noticed is there are no pro drivers. So like with NVIDIA cards, you get the studio driver. So if you are a content creator, there's a specific driver which you can use, which is more tailored towards content creation rather than gaming. So couldn't find a studio driver or a pro driver for the graphics card. So immediately alarm bells are ringing. And uh, I rendered the video exactly the same settings and I actually re-recorded over the existing one. And I did it right to the very end until it said at the bottom in the blue thing, your video project has been rendered successfully, blah, 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 done. And it took eight minutes and I think eight minutes 30 or eight minutes 40. So basically a minute longer. So a graphics card which cost me almost exactly well, actually, more than £100 more than the one it was replacing was over, well, around about a minute slower to render a project. So immediately, buyer's remorse kicked in so hard, I did feel sick. And I didn't eat any food until quite late today because I just, I just had this sick feeling in my stomach that I've just <coughs> ploughed a somewhat ridiculous amount of money into a graphics card which works worse than the one I already had. And I mentioned this on the Discord, and I mentioned it in a couple of places, it's like, what the F? I should have looked at the benchmarks a little bit closer. And um, most people know that the 6800 XT, in some cases, is faster than the 7800 XT. But I didn't expect it to be that much with the 6800. So, yeah. Immediately, it's like, I've got to get to a point where I stop buying AMD cards. I, I should have learned my lesson with the previous 10 cards that I bought, which have been AMD. There's been very few in the last four years, sorry, I have an eyelash, uh, that have actually been a notable upgrade to what I had previously, or a better the NVIDIA equivalent, or even the cheaper NVIDIA versions. And I'm getting to the point where I'm thinking to myself, how are AMD actually staying in business with these graphics cards? Now, clearly people are buying them because the videos seem to be actually quite popular on AMD cars. Not as popular as NVIDIA ones, but they still generate views and people still have interest. Obviously, if you look at the Steam hardware survey, you can see that it's basically a very, very much of a landslide win for NVIDIA. So in general, the market, you can see what is going on there. But I just, I don't, I really cannot understand where AMD are in this generation at all. I'm hoping there's gonna be some drivers which give some improvements that good old AMD fine wine technology.
but I am very fearful that it, it just isn't going to happen or it's going to come way too late. So I've now got a graphics card which cost me £100 more than the previous one, is actually slower at rendering, uses roughly the same power if not more, and idles ridiculously high. They still haven't figured out how to get the, mon the, uh, the graphics card to just sit on your desktop without burning through power. So it's like a trifecta of things which have gone wrong with this. So I did stick with it. Sorry if I'm boring you, but I'm gonna carry on. Um, I did stick with it and I actually went into Premiere Pro and I actually thought, right, what is the main thing that I struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis? And for me, it's on the timeline. So if I'm just doing a 4K timeline, it's generally okay. As soon as I put some B-roll over the top of the existing timeline, like I do, I just drag in a B-roll clip and put it over the top, sometimes it gets a little bit choppy. If I'm doing a 60 frames per second 4K video, which is very rare, uh, it's extremely choppy, so it gets really hard. And if I put a transition or another layer on top, so like three layers of video, which sometimes you want to do for like picture in picture, that sort of stuff, if I do that, it basically grinds to a halt. But with the 7800 XT, it does seem that the timeline performance is significantly improved. So the rendering time sucks, but it, it does appear I can stack like five, I think I did four or five different 4K clips nested on top of each other, and it played back at 4K, even in full resolution. Normally I'd have it like half scale or half res scaling, very much like what you do if you video edit with proxies. So it seems the video timeline uh, performance is significantly better. So I've still got to do some testing because it only came today. So in the moment I'm kind of, mm, do I send it back? Do I take advantage of that kind of distance buying thing and use that seven day cooling off period to send it back? I'm going to definitely edit some videos on it Monday, Tuesday, see how things go and obviously I'll let you know. But for me the biggest problem is timeline and it basically just grinding to halt or if I'm scrubbing along trying to find a section or to review footage and I'm doing it like double speed or whatever, that is what really slows me down in my particular workflow. So if it's better for that, I'm kind of going to be okay sticking with it in terms of Yes, it may not be brilliant, but potentially it might get better. Very much like I felt with the ARC A770, which was in, actually in a very similar position, although that had very good ray tracing performance and the video editing performance was, was excellent as well. So anyway, we will see how it goes. Wave Bob says, return it, Mike Defo. Uh, really Random Review says, I think I would return it too. If time is money, return. Well, that's the thing. The, that is the biggest thing I'm thinking. If the performance and editing is much better, I spend probably an hour, maybe two hours sometimes editing the video. So if that process is reduced by even a fraction or it feels smoother and it's less frustrating, you could do the up there. I would then forego that kind of minute of extra rendering time. Because when I click render, I don't necessarily have to sit there and watch it. I can just go away and do something else. So the rendering time isn't the be all and end all. And it kind of brought me back to what I was thinking, this is where this whole story goes like 360. When I did the RTX uh, 4070 Super review, one of the key takeaway points I said in the video is ultimately most of us, even myself at times, we look at reviews and you look at the kind of the frames per second, you look at the minimum frames per second, you look at the average, you look at the 1% lows and all that kind of stuff to get an idea of what it's gonna be like. But ultimately, it isn't about the rule figures, it's about the experience. And I think that is where a lot of reviewers possibly don't go into the depth. They talk about the figures and they go into the like really minute details of latency and all that kind of stuff, which is important. But it's the experience, I think, which is the more important thing. So purely on a benchmark thing, the graphics card I've just bought basically sucks against its uh, predecessor. But in terms of actual usability, which is what you're doing most of the time with the graphics card, i.e. a couple of hours on a timeline moving footage around, if that's buttery smooth, then does the benchmark make a difference? I don't know. That is my, uh, that's my quandary. And also it's the kind of thing that, it's a hard thing to get across actually in review, the actual using of it in, in real terms. And again, for benchmarks, when you're watching a game, 
if the game is really enjoyable to play and it's very silky smooth, looks nice, all that kind of stuff, does it matter if it's 10 frames per second slower than another card? I don't know. What makes the difference to you? Let me know in the comments section. Let me know what you think. Uh, right, so there we go. There's my uh, my monologue out of the way. That was quite a long one, actually. I do apologise. What is the time, anyway? Have I got the time on this thing? Half an hour. No. Half an hour. That's not too bad. And breathe. Oh, also, this week, um, before we get into taking a look at this case, because the cat is still asleep on the box, I've actually bought a tool, an actual tool, to do my job. Somewhat of an investment. It's been that time of year where, coming up to the tax return season, starting to kind of think about it, because before you know it, it's going to be April and it's all going to be done and dusted, so basically you've got until March, your tax return goes in, like April the 1st or 4th or whatever you do. So you kind of got to look at yourself and think, right, what do I need going forward to obviously offset against your tax bill? Because most self-employed people kind of work on a basis of like a in and out basis. So cash coming in, cash going out, you balance it all up at the end of the year and say, right, this is what is left of that figure. If you subtract one from the other, and that figure is what you pay your final tax bill on. So obviously, if you're going to be paying tax, if you can afford to do it, then it makes sense to buy some tools, some equipment, some uh, components, parts, basically anything which makes your job or your life easier. Like if you're a shopkeeper, you're looking ahead and thinking, right, what stock do I need for next year? You could stack it up and then you don't pay tax because you've bought it into the company. It's a, it's a tax deductible effectively. Anyway, so I bought a uh, OSRTT. So that is an open source response time tester because I actually quite like doing monitor reviews, but I also feel that when I do them, I don't have the equipment or the ability to give you the actual kind of the full on numbers. I can say the resolution and refresh rate and I can say that it feels good or it looks good or it's high quality and all those kind of stuff. And it's got a nice joystick button to control the monitor menus, that sort of stuff but it doesn't really mean anything unless you can see some actual equivocal real data to actually base your opinions on. So Tech Team GB, or Andy over at Tech Team GB, actually makes and has designed his own response time tester, which is kind of very similar to the NVIDIA version, which you can plug into the graphics card and it measures response time latency and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it does so many more things and basically you kind of strap it to your monitor you run a bunch of tests and it comes out with these really nice graphs and all the information that you could possibly need so you can just look at the actual picture at the end of it and say yes that's not a great monitor or yes it's not a great monitor but the color or the the accuracy of what is supposed to be being displayed is accurate it's just slow so I have purchased one of those uh, that it was was basically 200 pounds Ouch, that hurt also. So we will be doing some um, some decent, proper reviews of monitors, which will not only have my opinion, which some of you do obviously uh, like and listen to, I guess, uh, but we'll also have some proper full-on numbers. So regardless of what I say, I will have something to back up everything I'm saying. So I say a monitor is great and it feels very smooth, in theory, there should be a pictorial graph showing exactly that what I've said is 100% accurate. And if the manufacturer said, well, this is a one millisecond response time panel, we can turn around and say, well, no, it's more like an eight millisecond response time panel. So you can get the, the proper idea of what your monitor is going to be like, what it's capable of, whether there's a overshoot, whether it's slow in some areas or whatever. Anyway, I've got a lot to learn as far as monitor testing goes and actually how to use the tool itself. So I'm... Uh, I'm actually quite excited. It's like learning a new skill because I honestly know when it comes to things like overshoot, RGB values, uh, latency, I don't really know what it actually all means. So I'll be looking at doing a video showing you the tool and how it works. And also we're doing obviously every monitor review we do going forward. And I might even re-review some of the ones I've got here just so that I can kind of have a little bit of a sanity check. So it's like if I said it was okay and it looked nice and it seemed to be buttery smooth or silky smooth actually is it or is it just my perception of it which i think is actually quite important 
So, there we go. Ugly Bob's going to get some graphs. Hayden Trent says, deep pockets this month, Mike. It's not so much deep pockets, it's just we have got a, like a tax account. So when we have any earnings, we put money aside in the tax account. And it's kind of like, do I spend it on stuff that we need going forward to improve the quality of our content? Or do I give it to the tax man? I'm pretty sure I know who I'd rather give it to. Well, actually, I'd rather keep it. But I can't do that, so it's, it's one or the other. Kaiser Solo says, Mike, you should teach us what it all means. I think I might do. I think I will. Um, for the reason that for people like Hardware Unboxed, uh, Steve at Gamers Nexus, Linus Tech Tips, and even Andy himself, who makes these testers, because they have a ground in, in the electronics and how it all works, and they've got big teams behind them, and they can kind of bounce these things around and learn from each other, I'm kind of on my own in that respect. So... It's going to be uh, it's going to be really nice to just play around with it and kind of see what these results actually mean, and actually turn that into something which I can then explain in layman's terms. Because if someone says, "Oh, yeah, the overshoot values are three RGB values off," what does that mean? What does in actually real terms, what the f does that actually mean to anybody in reality? Yes, it's a number, and it sounds very posh and like wow, tech stuff. But most people have no idea what that means, including me, to be, to be completely honest with you. So we will be doing that. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be part of the learning curve. And hopefully it's going to be something which then monitor manufacturers may, might take a little bit of notice and say, oh, we'll send you ours and see what your tool and see what your impressions are. Because I quite like doing monitors. They're, they're quite nice things to have. Uh, John, John has a question. Not on that subject. Oh, right. Mike, can you recommend the cheapest laptop that I can play World of Warcraft for my daughter? Um, cheapest wise, probably the HP 255G8. I think it's a two, no, HP 245. That's the 14 inch screen. If you want the 15 inch screen, it's a 255. If you do a search on our channel, search for HP 245. I've done a couple of reviews on that one. Um, normally, you can pick those up for about somewhere between 350 and 450 depending on the time of year and what stock is around so, so yeah they're pretty decent nice uh ryzen 5 5500 u processor i think it is six cores 12 threads be absolutely fine for that other than that uh yeah like david andrew says acer aspire series are pretty good but go with the acer aspire 5 rather than the three the acer aspire 3 series are almost trashed here so acer aspire 5 or acer aspire 7 is what you want to be looking at david david uh, mike is an 8 pin good for rx isn't 8 pin good for an rx 5808 gig gigabyte version um yeah i think you have to have an 8 pin on that i don't think you there's a choice i think the rx 5800s are all Eight pins. William I'm not too sure. Uh, William Bodie, question Mike. Do you know MSI are helping to cheat in games now, PC and console? Yes. Um, I have noticed that in the CES uh, 2024, they did show off a monitor which uses AI to actually read the screen and kind of give you a pointer of where your enemies are. So using some pre-programmed script. I think that was for World of Warcraft as well. So if there was enemies approaching one area of the screen, you'd get like a, a red ring around them to say like, here's the bad guys, shoot this way. So yeah, I think that's a, it's kind of co quite cool. It is technically, well, it is cheating as such, but that's gonna be a very hard one to prove unless they have some sort of like devolve anti-cheat or like the stuff for um, Fortnite where it detects what other programs are running as overlays on the screen, so I'm guessing it is going to run as an overlay. But if it's hardware built into the screen, it's going to have to talk via software to the game, I would have thought. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how that pans out, though. Matthew Day? <coughs> Not really a question. Matthew Day says, Mike, try downloading the 
23Q4 Pro driver from amd.com forward slash support, blah, blah, blah. I've just picked it apart with 7-zip, and the Inf does have the 7000 series cards in it. Ah, that's interesting. Thank you for that. I will, um, I will try and do that, definitely. See what difference it makes. I will try and, I'll do a render, and then I'll do another render after with the same file and see if it improves it at all. It might do. You never know. Thank you for that. I did have a quick look, but I couldn't find any pro drivers apart from the ones for the like the, is it the W series. Anyway, moving on. William Bodie says it's cool cheating. Love MSI for it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Wally Bob says a question: Are those new coffee tea mugs? No, this is an old one, which um, is very. Uh, I will give you a close up. So for those of you that are watching on mobile devices, and also I get to stretch my legs. So this is. I'm tr I think that was a gift from one of the kids for Father's Day, wasn't it? Yes. Is it from George and Angel, or George and Angel, or George or Angel? Probably both. And they're is little, is that they? visible on there? I can't see. No, oh, it's not caught up yet. There you go. Dad, a man with photos in his wallet where his money used to be. Right. Whereas in my case, Dad, a man with <laughs> latency response tools and graphics cards where his wallet used to be. Uh, Rick H says, I'm done buying graphics cards for a while. I'll use what I have. I should have, uh, yeah, I should have thought that myself, actually. I don't know why I did it. I've I've said to myself, and I've said on the stream, I'm sure I've said it actually publicly as well, that I'm never buying another graphics card from AMD, or at least until they get their shit sorted out with Adobe. And I'm, I think, I'm pretty sure I've said that. Someone in the chat is bound to have heard me say that at some point. David Andrell says, you know you live in a dodgy area when the news agent sells Father's Day cards packs, uh, sorry, sells Father's Day cards in packs of 10. <laughs> oh What's dear. What's your favourite interesting thing to come out of CES? My favourite interesting thing to come out of CES. Oh, that's an interesting one. I've got to roll the sleeves up for this one a bit. It is getting quite warm in here as well. Um, most interesting thing. There's something which I very much I'm concerned about, I'm pleased about, I don't want to be a thing, but I also want to be a thing. So I'm not sure if that classifies as being in that category or not, but the, the whole Project Zero thing, I really think it's going to cause a lot of pain in aggro. This is basically the motherboards that have all the connectivity on the back rather than being on the front, which for wiring up a PC is going to be amazing because it's quite a hard thing to do for a lot of people. Maybe you're visually impaired, maybe you have limited dexterity, but actually connecting up things on a motherboard is a pain in the ass. It really is, especially if you've already installed things like your graphics card or your M.2 drives or your CPU cooler, which is huge and is covering all the bits and pieces. And plugging in things like your EPS cable at the top, especially if you've already put your radiator in, it's, oh, it, there's always something which is in the way. And also, sometimes it's hard to cable manage things like uh, USB 3.0 Type-A headers. They're just a big, chunky block, very difficult to cable manage. Then you've also got the USB Type-Cs as well now, which are a little bit more sturdy, a little bit smaller, but still difficult to manage. And also you've got things like where manufacturers decide it's a great idea to still use ketchup and mustard cabling on the HD audio and USB ports. Like anybody wants to see that at the bottom of their beautifully crafted PC. I get it. Tons of people out there couldn't give a rat's what it looks like as long as it plays Fortnite at more than 165 frames per second. I understand where you're coming from with that. Otis, get down. Oh. On the monitor. Uh, there should, might be a cat going across in the back of the shot, so don't be alarmed. Uh. Otis, come on, get down. He's just in there. There he is, there's Calf. Say hello, Calf. She, I, one day I'll get her on that and she'll accidentally do it. There he is. There's Otis. 
Hi, right, buddy. It's Mike's unboxing blue collar. He's uh, got his Mike's unboxing blue collar on to match. Not on the keyboard. Wait, not on the keyboard. Stay. Oh, he's just too excited. Now he's got all starstruck. Now he's licking the power supply. He's definitely mine. <laughs> <laughs> Um, is the stream freeze, oh, isn't it? Sorry. If, oh, actually, if you find in the, the stream is freezing up, if you've got any sort of ad blocker on, that could potentially be why. So any ad blockers or anything like that, chances are if you watch a stream for long enough, it will freeze up. Just uh, throw it out there. I'm not saying you have, but you never know. Um, yeah. So the Project Zero thing, I'm actually quite interested. I think it's going to be an interesting thing. Uh, Thermal Take are actually re-releasing the Series 300 cases, so the smaller version of what we've got behind. So they're doing the, the Series 330, which is a, a revised version of the 300 with the kind of Project Zero stuff going on the back. And they've done it in conjunction with ASUS. ASUS, 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 whichever. Um, so we're going to be trying that out very shortly. They're actually going to be sending the new Series 330 and also an ASUS motherboard, graphics card, and a few bits and pieces. And we're going to be taking a look, see what it's like. So obviously, I have my reservations. But if they can keep the prices basically the same, but giving you the functionality of hiding those wires, uh, I'm actually quite interested to see how it pans out and if it makes wiring easier. Now, for me personally, I'm going to say this now, and I probably will say it in the review as well. For a lot of people, depending where you are, if you don't have a lot of room for your PC case, and I take this as a prime example. So where my PC is there currently, this is the Series 500, so it's a little bit larger. But we've got the Swing Out door, which is also, I believe, on the Series 300, if memory serves. So you open up this bit, swing it open. So if you need to connect anything up, you can just get your wires, plug them in wherever you need to, do your things, unplug it. If your RGB is not working, you can disconnect it and reconnect it. So that's where it actually gets to be almost a pain in the ass. Because if you're doing a PC build where everything's connected on the back, you have to actually, obviously, wire everything up from the back. You have no access to it. So like for me here, I would have to get the PC and somehow disconnect all the wires, turn it around 180 degrees to be able to get to the back, turn it all back, plug it all back in, turn it on, see if I fix the problem. And if not, then yeah, it's gonna be an absolute <coughs> noise. So I think for some people, it's gonna be a really cool thing. It's gonna make a PC build look fantastic. But if you're a regular tinkerer with PC parts, I think it's actually gonna be one of those things which is gonna be detrimental to your sanity. Unless you've got a lot of room, like a big desk, or you've got it on like a spinning table or something like that. So. There's definitely pros and cons to it. It's going to look very smart. It's going to look very clean. But then realistically, most PCs kind of do look quite clean anyway. So do we actually need it? Again, if it costs a lot more money, then I'm out because there's no point. It's, for me, it's just going to make life harder. But you may like it. I don't know. Yes, Cal. Giorgio, can you build? Giorgio. Should I build? Uh, where is that? Can't see it. Is that a top? Can I read it? Should I build AM4 with 3800X for 100 euros and 7800XT for 5700X, 170 euros? Um, I will. That is 750 watt CPU enough. 750 watt is probably enough. Yeah, I think they recommend a 700 watt power supply for the 7800XT. I, I don't. I'm not sure how much of the start of the stream you heard. But I've just bought a 7800XT and I was slightly underwhelmed with it. So you might potentially not want to do that. Um, if you're going to build, I think I don't think the 3800X is maybe going to be the processor for you in that regard. Um, it's for 100 pounds. It's kind. It's yeah. It's sort of okay-ish. There's a lot of places at the moment selling the 5800 and the 5700 for very low money. So it's almost a bit of a false economy to go for that slightly older processor. Don't get me wrong, 3800 is still a great processor, but <coughs> combined with the 7800 XT, which kind of does like a little bit of horsepower behind it, or potentially could use it. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know. I I would be tempted to go with the 5700X. I think buying a a, um, a 3000 series AMD processor at this late in the game might be a false economy because if you then are looking to change it in maybe a year's time, then you're going to be spending another kind of 100, 150 pounds. So you may be better off spending the extra 70 now to get a more up-to-date CPU, being that the platform is kind of slightly coming towards an end. Hello, um, which one's that? Oh, that's Candy. So yeah, I think that is, it's a hard, it's a, it's a tough decision there. Depends on your financial status as well, what you've got available or how often you upgrade your rigs, etc. Uh, there's Candy. Don't stand on the keyboard. Thank you very much. I'm going to close that in case we get some cat intruders. Rifty. Rifty. Uh, AM4 or AM5 for 700 quid. To be honest with you, for 700 pounds, you are going to be a little bit of a crux. It's a really difficult decision because the AM4 platform is very good value for money at the moment. The motherboards are going to be about £100, well, about £50 cheaper, roughly. Processors are going to be around about £100 cheaper. The RAM is going to be about half the price. So there are potentially still some really good savings for the AM4 platform. But, like I kind of just said, really, you're buying into a platform which is end of life, technically. There are processors being released for it, but they're only kind of rehashes of existing ones which are lower binning processors. So there's nothing actually on the roadmap. Not to say that there won't be AM4 processors and parts available for the next five years or so, but it is going to be one of those things where it's not going to be a platform that AMD themselves are concentrating on. So things like chipset drivers, uh, enhancements to the BIOS, that sort of stuff. You kind of going to get left behind a little bit. So at this point in time, I would be tempted if you're looking at an AM5 build or an AM4 build, get something like the 7500F, which is about £130 here in the UK from places like CX. You can pick them up on the used market quite easily or relatively easily. For £130, it's a cracking processor and it's about the same speed as a 5800X. So you're not really kind of losing anything as such there. Um, cores arguably you could say but 7500 f great processor 7600 as well absolutely great similar ish money depending where you're buying it from um i cannot give you a definitive answer there really it's a very tough one i still struggle with the whole concept myself so i'm probably not the best person to say definitely go this way or definitely go that way there's pros and cons either way Uh, Dutch John says the sound is gone. Is that the cat? Have I muted myself? Um, SPG. Uh, SPG 33. Wow. Oh, no. Mike thought that on the fractal torrent. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like the fractal torrent. I know it's a really popular case. It's like anything. It's one of those subjective, subjective things. Some people like it. Some people don't. I am one of those that I don't particularly like it i kind of like the idea of the design of it is kind of different and it looks pretty cool but it also at the same time i think that because it is such do you have to do that on the desk seriously um they right there not really come on get out of it you can't be licking butts and stuff here this is a family show <laughs> pops on, come on over there come over here I need to move everything in a minute. Come on, get out. Come on, baby. Come on, get out. Come join here with me, easy. Good girl. Um, I can't remember what the question was now. Oh, about the case. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I... I don't know. It's... it's if, if, if you like the look of it, and it works for you, and the price is right, and all that kind of stuff, then... Sure, go for it. Is don't don't you don't need someone on YouTube to tell you to buy a case or not to buy a case. It's ultimately it's going to be down to you. I don't think there's a specific reason that I have to say why I wouldn't. Um, the only thing that I think possibly would be the fact that you have to. If I'm right in thinking, the power supply goes in the top, which 
I think that whole concept is a, a, from a bygone era. And I think, if anything, it's possibly going to be detrimental to your PSU. Because most PSUs are designed to be ran at sort of 40 <laughs> degrees or less. Whereas if you've got your PSU kind of right up near your uh, VRM area, it's basically sucking in a lot of hot air. So I don't think you're going to be getting the best out of your PSU or potentially even reducing the lifespan of your PSU, possibly. I don't know for sure. I've not got answers for that and I've not got any electrical data for that. But it's just the way my mind works. That was one of the things that immediately I thought, oh, PSU in the top. That's kind of weird. Very uh, 1990s. So I don't know. Other questions we've got here. Daniel Emberley says those open header pins on the back of the board look like they could be easily bent. Very much so. Uh, so many builders are used to just laying out the board down on the back on a work surface. Yes, that is very much something to consider because there's been a few times where I've done BIOS updates, whatever, and I just put the motherboard onto a cardboard box or something. And you think of things like uh, RGB pins, just RGB pins, which are a little bit fragile. Uh, TPM pins. There's lots that can potentially go wrong there. I think it's one of those things that it's a, it's a good idea in theory. The principle behind it is relatively sound. You're basically making it so kind of business in the back, party in the front, and it's <laughs> and it's uh, it's got a potential. It definitely got potential. But my fear is that. It's very difficult to make sure that all motherboard vendors are adhering to the same standards. So there's going to be the use case scenario where you buy um, a Project Z or Project Zero or whatever they choose to call it for the individual brands. And you buy the board, you get it home, you stick all your stuff in and you find out that, oh, the USB Type-C header's in the wrong place. There's not a cutout there. So then it gets into the whole modifying territory. And a lot of people don't like doing that. There's a, a, Of all PC kind of users and modders and stuff, uh, I think they've worked out it's like 1% of the global PC user database that actually do overclocking or modding. So to kind of limit your market to like 1% of the market, which which is already shrinking at times anyway, I think is a risky maneuver. Clearly they're making enough money elsewhere to be able to kind of do these kind of weird things and to try them out and see what happens. So I don't know. I think it's very much like Thermaltake with their CTE, the Centralized Thermal Efficiency, which is like, it's a big risk. They've put a lot of money and a lot of resources into that. And if it doesn't pay off um, within a, a couple of years, then it will disappear. And it might even take the company with it. You never know. But it's one of those things. It's, uh, it's always a bit of a gamble. Yes, Ka? Brandy, can you mix and match A and... No, can AM4 and AM5 be mixed and matched? No. No, AM4 and AM5 are not intercompatible um, in actually more ways than one. So the socket is different, the mounting method is different, the motherboard is different, the power is different, and the RAM is different. And there's probably something else as well, but no, there's... it. No. <laughs> Basically, no. Definitely not. Uh, David Nero says, yeah, that is why my idea of softball motherboard trays. I think that is going to be um, something which would needs to be utilised. I think maybe some manufacturers will do like an MSI tray or an ASUS tray or ASRock, Gigabyte, whatever. Possibly. Firestorm says, what have I missed? Uh, nothing apart from me ranting mostly and the cats showing off their butts. They do that a lot. Uh, oh, it's raining. It's raining, bud. Gary's in the house. Hi, Gary. Nick Barnes as well. Mr. Hello, everybody. If I've not said it already. Oh, actually, something else that came out this week. A uh, good friend of the channel, Welly Bob. Sorry, not Welly Bob. <laughs> oh, God. Brain's gone to sleep now. Holly Bobs also known as Stuart Cleary, um, noticed a deal over here in the UK for these. These are solar wall sensor lights. Pack of two, 50% uh, off, and they were down to £8, I think it is, for a pair. 
So four quid each for these, which I, you know me, I do like to save a little bit of money where I can, unless it means buying AMD graphics cards. That still hurts. <laughs> uh, but these are actually pretty cool. We posted them on our Discord. I think Caps probably find the link. And they're also on ShopSmart as well, which is uh, our kind of sister channel. And yeah, these are a great deal. So solar powered, it's got some batteries tucked away up in here. And yeah, you basically just screw them to fence panels or to a wall, they come with mountains, etc. And you've got a button on the front, four modes. So you've got like uh, always on. So whenever it gets dark, they'll come on full bright. You got it so there's a dim mode, so it stays dim, but then when someone passes the PIR sensor, it gets brighter for about 20 seconds. Uh, there's an SOS mode. I don't know why you'd want that in the garden. Maybe if the aliens land and you're crapping it and you've run out of toilet paper, you could press the button and set it to SOS mode. So any aliens or helicopters flying over the top will notice your SOS and possibly bring you some TP for your bunghole. That would be good. Um, well worth the four pound investment. <laughs> there is another mode as well. I can't think what it is now because I just distracted myself with TP and bungholes. But anyway, yeah, these are great. And uh, thanks Stuart for posting them. I still haven't worked out how to turn it on. It may be a... Uh... We've got two already and they're brilliant. Yeah, we've got some similar ones and they've been fantastic. So yeah, you get a two pack, not the dead wrapper but two of these packed together. So yeah, eight quid, happy days. So I, I don't think I'm gonna do a review on these. I'm, I might do, I'm not sure. But these are pretty cool because they're, <coughs> because they're self-contained. If you've got an area maybe at the back of your house, if there's like a lane that runs behind the back of your house, you don't wanna run like cables all the way up to the back of your house because it's expensive and you know, people might come along and like take advantage of your electrical cables or nick them. So having some of this, like four quid a pop, screw some of these on the back of your fence, and then if there's people doing stuff at the, down the back of your house, then the light's gonna come on and possibly deter them. Or maybe if you're like a pet owner, then your cat or dog can uh, see where it's having a crap in the back of your garden. They can, see in the dark, yeah. they can see in the dark, but I'm sure they'd rather have a little bit of extra light so they don't accidentally poop on their feet. Animals do that. They're not that bright. Some are. They're not as bright as these lights, that's for sure. Anyway, so I actually, uh, you can only buy one set at a time with the 50% discount. So I had to place two orders. So I got two boxes. Yeah, pretty happy with that. So again, thanks uh, Stuart for posting that in the chat. Stuart says he's still Oh silicon. yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, word, seal, seal around the edges with silicon to stop the water ingress. That is actually a very good idea. Mike is an excellent reboxer. I did, that went in really well. I did practice though, because I took that earlier to have a look. But they need charging, so I'm gonna get those put up in the garden. So no doubt, I can smell the singed tail. Yeah, I'm not surprised you've done it underneath, come on. Cat's gone in the fire. It's the worst. Cat's in the cradle. It's not hot actually. Uh, how do they mount? Uh, there's included screws. So there's two holes at the top. Sorry, I know this isn't very techy, but it's kind of interesting. And actually, our demographic is somewhat of the uh, the more refined age group, let's say. And uh, this kind of thing is this is our this is our shit, isn't it? It really is. So there's a hole at the top on both sides. So you literally just wham, wham, stick a couple of screws through there into wood. It comes with a set of the um, wall plugs or rule plugs, as they're often referred to. So these are plastic wool plugs or wool plugs is the brand name what's the what is the brand name for those in america do they call them wool plugs or wool anchors what's the name for them i'm intrigued because i know we've all got different terminology for these things i will says i'll grab those lights how do they mount? uh not a young pup like me no hayden you're probably one of the uh the younger demographic it's good because uh, you youngsters can learn from us old, older chaps. We've we've been there, we've done it, we've seen it all. We were there when the wheel was invented, <laughs> and probably reinvented. I remember when all this was grass, and fields. Anyway, did you put a link in them? 
yes, you did. So Cap's put a link for those. If you want to pick them up, um, I'm not sure how long the deal's on for, so I think it's going to be a case of they'll be gone when they sell out sort of thing, and I doubt if they'll come back. So get away from that fire. Valid until the 31st. Valid. The offer is valid until the 31st, but I would say they'll, they're they going to sell out before then. I'm probably going to order another couple, actually. Be handy for the summer. Uh, Ugly Bob says, usually call them wool plugs. Stuart Cleary says, wool plugs. Uh, dry wool plugs, Sky Stalker says. Of course, yeah, because uh, in Canada and America, generally you tend to have um, timber construction with uh, dry wool or plasterboard, as we call it over here. So you'd use dry wool plugs. Matthew Day says, hmm, I am tempted if they are still on. I think they are. Caps having a look now. Are they still available? Still yep, still available. Till the 31st. There you go. <laughs> All while stocks last. So it says, doesn't say how many in stock. Uh, Giorgio, going back to some technology now. I've watched your boss undervolting CPU vid that you did. Uh, it didn't lower my CPU, the 7950X3D temps. Uh, for my previous 7800X CPU was working well, negative 30 undervolting. Um, the 7950 should undervolt a little bit, I think. Make sure that the, the settings you're dialing in are actually taken in the motherboard. See, once you've done your undervolt, go back into the hardware monitoring section in your BIOS and see if the actual the CPU voltage has dropped from normal. I know it kind of moves around, but you should be able to see if it's dropped at all. Maybe it's not uh, taking it. Charles Ballard says, I don't, oh, wrong one. Uh, I don't think they have a manufacturer's name. They are just wall anchors. Yeah, that's the thing. In, um, like, duct tape is for taping up ducts, D-U-C-T. But here in the UK and possibly other places as well, there is a brand called Duck, D-U-C-K, which does duct tape, which is basically the same fabric tape, but under a branded name so in the uk people say have you got any duct tape but they also say have you got any duct tape kind of like the whole kind of vacuum hoover thing or dyson hoover thing where they're both brands which are commonly referred to but they're the same thing dutch Jan says plug-in that is the that is that the uh the ikea version or the german version hollow wool fastener says hue lateral Letter says, did I just, I just got back from a birthday party. Did I miss anything? No, no, not really. I don't think you did. Hey, James Miscellaneous, how you doing? Georgie, David again. I've watched your bio. I'm I sorry. just did that, did that one. Did that yeah. One. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. Uh, JB's Arcade Mods, how you doing? And Welly Bob, message retracted. Thank you for that. <laughs> right then, let's uh, try and take a look at this case. Now, for those of you that have been around a while, you probably noticed that we get quite a few cases from the people over at IONS. Now, the home of IONS in the UK is pcgamingcases.co.uk. pcgamingcases.co.uk, which, despite their kind of name for their website, they actually sell basically most things. So they do power supplies, cases, um, chairs, basically bits and pieces of everything. Water cooling, all kinds of stuff. So they do Corsair, they do NZXT, they do Game Max, they do CIT, they do IONS, various other brands. But they are actually the kind of the main importer of the IONS case brand in the UK. So they sell under the name Kaza on eBay, Kaza UK. And Kaza, I think, is actually the trading name, or they're kind of registered. Is he dead? God damn it, those cats would be the death of me. I actually had heart palpitation then, because the cat's just led, like, all limp and lethargic in front of the fire. No, it's because Daisy had a random neck with my... <sighs> I'm too old for this shit. I am. I'm you know, feeling older every day. Anyway, moving on. So yeah, Kazoo UK are the kind of the main importers of the IONS cases into the United Kingdom. And they sell on eBay, Amazon, obviously on their own site as well. And they do other stuff as well. So it's not like they're just a, like a one-trick pony. They do a bit of everything, which is always good to see. 
and for some reason they like the reviews that we do and every couple of weeks or months they send an email saying Mike got a load of cases come in do you want to have a look and it's like yeah of course I do now we have this really strange kind of relationship so Steve the guy at Casa UK sends me a list and says oh we've got these in any of them take your fancy so he doesn't say like do you want one or two he just says basically which ones do you want so it's kind of like a free ring so I click on the links and I say, oh, I quite like this one, this one, and this one. Is that all right? Any one of those will do. And he basically sends all of them. But he quite often sends ones that I didn't ask for. So, oh, there's a, a PayPal come in from, is that Stuart? Yeah. From Stuart Cleary, 20 pounds. Donation to the channel, thank you very much. A couple more of those and we'll almost be uh, breaking even on our graphics card. I'm still upset about the graphics card. I can't believe I bought that graphics card. Deeply upset. Cover the light. Epilepsy warning. Apologies. Anyway. Uh, Welly Bob says, okay, I'm going to watch. I'm going into watch mode only now. Ta-ta for now. <laughs> no worries, Welly Bob. You rest up. Look after yourself. Welly Bob has got some um, health issues, let's say. So mobility is a problem for a lot of people these days, and Welly Bob is uh, probably more so than the norm. So fair play to him, making the effort to get in front of his keyboard or whatever, tablet, and type in comments and stuff. We do appreciate you. We really do. All of you. We do appreciate all of you for sticking around and watching, helping us grow this channel. Rick Hayes says, let it go. <laughs> Sky Stalker says, return it, Mike. I, I should do. I should. I, I really should. I'm going to give it a fair crack on Monday and Tuesday. Give it a couple of days. I might, if I get any chance, I haven't played any games on it yet at all. Not a single game. So I really need to do that. I did run a 3D Mark test just as a sanity check to make sure that it was actually working as it should do. And it actually beat the 4070 Super, the MSI one, uh, by, I think, three or 400 points. So very, very close in 3D Mark. Which I know isn't really a thing, but 3D Mark is something that people use to kind of compare stuff. So, anyway. There is that. So, anyway. Ions. Steve sends over the cases. Generally not the ones I asked for. And uh, this time has been no different at all. So, there was a selection of five. There was one which looks like an actual fish tank. Like, with the, like a curved end on it. And I'm like... It's cool, but it looks too much like a fish tank. You know you get to the point where, like computer cases, they've got a lot of glass, and you think, yeah, that's really cool. And you get to a point where they do have that kind of a vague, vague kind of fish tank look to them. Then they've taken it a step further and made one which is a fish tank, literally is a fish tank. So yeah, I turned that one down. It was about 100 pounds, which for a curved glass fish tank looking case, I don't think is extraordinarily bad but the one we're going to take a look at tonight is the ions kz vf now there is a kz v which is the non-fan version so with the ions cases if they've got an f as a suffix or for those of you who don't understand that's the word that's the letter at the end prefix is at the start suffix is at the end and that won't look right for you because you're seeing a reverse angle so Prefix, suffix, if that makes sense. Word in the middle. So the F version is um, fans. So if you want the non-fan version, you like the look of the case, but you don't think the fans are any good, which I don't know what they're going to be like yet. They could be good. They could be bullshit. Who knows? We will find out, and we will find out the harsh truth tonight on the stream. So yeah, if you like the case, you like the look of it, about £65 without the fans. And if you get the version with the fans, which comes with, I think it's supposed to be four addressable RGB fans. I think it's about £10 extra. So you're paying like £2.50, no, yeah, £2.50 each for a fan, which for an RGB fan, come on, £2.50, ain't bad. And if it's got PWM, if it's got addressable RGB, I think it's a, it's a pretty good shout. Caf's going to show me something, which I can't see. So I'm going to flip that. Uh, Matthew Day, bless your heart, has sent us £5 PayPal. And he says... Uh, because I didn't need to buy a key. Oh, bless you. So, uh, Matthew Day has been spending this week rebuilding his PC. He's actually brought himself slap bang into 2023. 
and 2024 with his new AM5 rig, which he's been putting together. And uh, he was a little bit concerned that he might need a new Windows license key. So he didn't need one. Seems that his system has activated from the previous key that he had, uh, which may or may not have come from premiumcdkeys.com. If, for some reason, you are also after a license key, this is a very good time to plug premiumcdkeys.com. So for those of you who don't know, or you've uh, this is the first time here, or you've not seen us, we like to do things on the cheap, if we can, as long as it works. So premiumcdkeys.com forward slash mics unboxing, you can get your Windows 10, Windows 11 license keys for basically less than five euros. I think it works out to be about four pounds 23, four pounds 24, depending on the exchange rate at the time for a genuine Windows license key. Now you can pick up an OEM, a retail or whatever. It'll basically, when you register, it'll say, this product has been activated with a digital license. You're good to go. And it's considerably cheaper than basically any of the other YouTubers on YouTube. You can basically buy four keys from premium CD keys for the price of the cheapest of any of the others, I think, pretty much. So please don't spend over the odds on your Windows license keys. You do support the channel by purchasing from premiumcdkeys.com forward slash mics unboxing. So you save money. I get a very small kickback. I think it's like 30p or something bizarre. Is it 5%? I think we get 5%. So what is 5% of £4.23? 5% so that'd be 20p. It's about 22 pence per key. So clearly we're not going to be retiring early or anytime soon on 22 pence. Or even 50p for that matter, if it was 10%, which we don't get. So yeah, we're not making any money on this, realistically. Yes, we it all mounts up, but essentially we do it because it's good value and hopefully you can save some money. And I think... Uh, looking at the stats, somewhere in the like double digit thousands of purchased license keys. So in the like five years, is it five years we've been doing it? Since 2018, I think. So since 2018, um, how, six then, how many is how many keys have we is, have they sold, or how many products have been sold? Eleven thousand five hundred and fifty-nine. Eleven thousand five hundred and fifty-nine individual items have been sold through premium CD keys. Pretty much office keys, Windows license keys. So that's incredible. So there's literally tens of thousands of you <laughs> that have saved money by using that link. And we are very grateful. Hayden says, I've bought about five of them so far. Skystalker says, I've bought at least 30. Wow. Skystalker says Mike has a crusade against expensive Windows keys. I actually genuinely do because I've, all my life I've always got into trouble because I've always tried to support the underdog uh, because I think the underdog is generally underrepresented. You know what I'm trying to say. Is not given enough support. So if there's an underdog and I see them basically getting either hammered or I think they should be promoted, then I'll stick my neck out and say, like, come on. This is like, this is real life. It's not just like, this isn't a, a pre-run. This is the real life. So if people are trying to take advantage of you online or websites, whatever, don't don't fall for it and spread the news, spread the word. Premium CD keys, if Windows license keys are a thing that you use in your daily business or in your life or whatever, let people know. James Mussolini says, Mike does indeed support the underdog if they are just. Yeah, that's that is that's going to be a key thing. Like, we're not just going to support any old company just because they're an underdog. Like, I was a very very strong advocate for AMD when the the um, the FX range was out because the money and the performance it, it wasn't great, but they were trying to improve the brand. I'm starting to somewhat regret that decision now. But anyway, we move on. Right, Maisie. Novice PC builder says thanks so much for the great content from the other side of the pond. Thank you very much, Novice PC Builder. I myself was a Novice PC Builder once myself, and some would argue I still am. So, this is the case. As you can tell, IONS have gone way over and above and gone with an extremely elaborate uh, cardboard box using at least two different colours. 
and a very basic outline of the case. That's not really selling it, is it? If someone come up to you with a box, they say, oh, do you want this case? It's 60 quid. You'd be like, um, yeah, great. Looks fantastic. Anyway, Ion's Pro Gamer KZVF, part of their Ether Ultra range. I'll put the specs on the side now so you can see what that is about. Wow, three pounds eight. That's good. And buy a ten, not eleven. Yeah, buy if you're buying Windows keys, buy the Windows ten keys, not the eleven keys. The eleven keys are more expensive, and ten activates eleven. Although we would make more commission on eleven. We would make it. <laughs> we we'd make an extra two p if you bought a Windows eleven license, but don't do it. It's unnecessary. Anyway, for those of you watching, so one USB three, one USB Type C, and HD audio on the front panel. You've also got um, support for ATX, micro ATX, ITX, blah, 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 all that stuff. PSU goes in the bottom and supports ATX power supplies, radiator support. You've got support for 360 in the top and also a 420 mil radiator, which uh, that's actually pretty cool. I didn't realize it did a 420 as well. That's impressive. Uh, VJ length 420 mil, as you'd expect, because if it takes a 420 mil rad, it's going to take a 420 mil graphics card. And your CPU height 185 mil, so you can put in some absolutely horrendously oversized coolers in there, should you wish to. And you've got the dimensions on there and the weight. So the actual weight of the case, just over seven kilos. The gross weight, including the packaging, 8.4. So. There you go. Let's uh, let's get this thing out of the box and see what it is all about. And I am actually quite interested. Do you know what? I wanted this Rolson knife in Mike's unboxing blue. Do you think I could get one? No. <laughs> Gutted. Have nice I have got another knife actually, which uh, Bob sent ages ago, which I used for doing some laminate flooring and for taking up some carpet. And I'm sorry to say, I think I broke it. <laughs> it, it was one of those knives where you could adjust the, uh, the position of it and you could have it like that and it would lock. But yeah, it, um, well, I think I broke it. I think it's still here somewhere. I was meaning to repair it. Anyway, my apologies, Bob. And thank you, Luke. Yeah, I'm pretty keen on this design, to be honest with you. And actually, whilst I'm getting this out of the box quickly, let me throw up the uh, picture on their website so you can actually have a quick look. Skullstalker says, damn it, Mike makes me want to buy a new video card. He's a very bad man. I am. I'm not going to lie. Uh, where are we? Ions. So there we go. You can have a quick look at that. I don't think that's got any... Oh yeah, it's fine. No, this is full size, um, full ATX tower. So let me go back to the, well, the desktop stream. I think that's the one. Yeah, there you go. So 79.99, that is the version with the fans. I thought it was cheaper now, actually. Oh, the black version is cheaper, I think. But yeah, still 80 quid. I think it looks pretty darn impressive. But I'm going to take it out of the case. Feel free to uh, have a quick read through there. See what you think. I think it looks actually quite interesting. Which, obviously... I honestly don't know. I don't think there is a hinged door. And it looks like... I'm not, I don't think it's a solid piece of glass. Like an l sheet. So, I honestly don't know. I've literally not taken this out of the box, as you can see. Because I've just had to cut through the tape. So, we are all experiencing this for the first time at the same time. And it's actually got a nice kind of bag over it. I'm interested to find out who makes these for ions. What do you want? What are you looking at? Huh? Oh, he's, he's waiting to he's, take over the channel. Otis wants to take over the channel. Hang on. Let me um, put a bit of tape on there. So you don't get all your bodily bits in there. There we go. Sorry about that, headphone users, but there you go. So let's go back to the main camera. So this is basically how you're going to get it. Now, I'm not too sure 
Have I? Yeah, it feels like that's the metal panel on the back, so we should be all good there. I should be all good there. Calf might be in the reflecto porn, so, oh, get, so you've got the glass facing it. Get ready to uh screenshot because calf's gonna be on there maybe. <laughs> this is where I open it up and it's broken or something, that'd be fantastic. I'm struggling to actually get the uh, the cloth off. I wanted to do a very quick reveal, but it seems that I am not able to. There we go. Ta da! Fish tank case in the house. It has tempered glass. Please remove the film. And it looks like it does come included with four fans as expected. And yes, that case has actually popped out. Is that meant to come out? Ah, right. So that has come loose in transit ions you're very naughty people it was packaged very well though it doesn't look like it's got a knock so the glass just pulls off it's on rails so actually well there you go you can see that now so two little slots on the bottom Sorry, I'm doing this on a very unusual angle. So there we go. That's actually quite a nice clean look at the bottom. And on the corner. Yeah, and the corner matches up pretty nicely as well. Let me grab the camera. Prepare for wobbly camera angles. Don't even so, get up. Should be alright now. So the glass there meets there. There's no metal or anything there supporting it. And you can see at the bottom there, there is the front panel I.O. So you've got your power button reset button, combo headset mic jack, USB 3.0 and your type C port. That is rather nice. I quite like it. This might actually end up replacing the Series 500, you know. Oh, that's what was rattling around inside. Is the IO on the floor? Uh, the IO is on the bottom. So yeah, the IO is down here. So that is a little bit awkward actually, because for plugging in things, it could be a little bit of a pain in the backside. I don't know whether it is a deal breaker or not. Maybe it might be. Uh, does that piece of glass come out the top? I don't think, I think this glass is stuck in. So that ain't going anywhere. So let's do a quick spin around. Actually, I'll get rid of the glass panel because calf's already a little bit What's it about that? What's it? So there you go. There is the uh, the side that would potentially be facing you. So you've got ventilated mesh at the bottom. Got your control panel there. Moving around to the back side. So you've got the ventilation for the fans which are behind there. So that's going to be exhausting or intaking cool fresh air, whichever you choose to be. I think I would probably set that as being exhaust, being how perforated it is. But you could basically do whichever you choose. Let's uh, take off the side panel and see what's going on here. Oh yeah, that was good. Didn't it? Yeah, I like that one. Nice one. So we do actually get a uh, addressable RGB fan controller. That's a nice thing to see included at this price. So SATA powered, which is again also very nice. And how do we connect this up? So oh, four pin PWM, excellent. And also a three pin five volt addressable RGB on the IONS hub. And it would appear that that is wired up there to a reset switch, which I don't know where that wire goes. Where does that go? Uh, possibly, it might be, yeah. So very much like the Mian Vision OCY. Um, so you've got a, a tray here for hard drives or SSDs. So if you don't want to be using any additional drives, looks like that is just a single screw at the bottom. 
And we've got a couple of screws at the top here. Uh, for the fans, they are all four pin PWM. Looks like it will fit the Project Zero type board. Do you know what? I think they've done that, haven't they? They've already gone ahead and done the Project Zero layout. Wow. I didn't think. Like, don't get me wrong, I like Ions as a brand and all that sort of stuff, but you don't necessarily expect them to come out with like more grain breaking features whereas this actually is you're basically ready for project zero there's all the cutouts in essentially all the right places so yeah that's uh that's a neat bit of flexibility and also it appears they have actually listened somewhere along the line and we have white usb 3.0 cable a white usb type c cable all of the front panel connection stuff is all white as well and white block connectors I am impressed. Um, I want to turn the lights on, let's be honest. So I am going to do that. Now, let me see. How does. Yeah, join our Discord. If you've got a problem with your PC, head over to Discord. Cable management on this, this looks like it's all been just thrown in here. So, yeah, let's not be too concerned about that because cable management is something which is something which we have to address at some point. So spin this round and we'll take a look at the back. So on the back, what we got? So we've got room for a 140 mil fan in there if you want to change that out the included 120. Or if you buy this without the fans, you can obviously put whatever fans you want in. They look like fans are riveted. Um, no, fans have just got screws. Silver screws to match the rest of the silver. Nice little silver thumb screw on the back to cover the uh, PCI Express. And all of those are individuals as well. So those are all removable and replaceable, as you can see. It's got the little fingers there. So again, that's a, a step in the right direction. I'm doing this on a very un unusual angle. There you go. So that's that in there in place. That's good. Uh, ATX power supply in the basement. Yeah, this is, uh, this is actually looking like a pretty good, decent case. And look at, oh, I didn't notice that, but we'll have a look at that in a minute. So in the top, you've got room for uh, 420 of fans. So that's going to be three 140 mil fans or three um, 120s, depending on what you want to do. There's quite a lot of uh, potential here. And the top of the case, in case you're wondering, is this ventilation mesh so that's going to act as your filter so it's not going to be quite as free flowing but this is exactly the same as what they've got on the Lian Li 216 and it actually works quite well so yeah it's a uh, pretty decent and in terms of the basement section looks like there's a little box of tricks down here let's have a little look see see what we've got in here aha we have a remote control so that gives away the uh, what's going on in terms of the lighting, but does it also control fan speeds? So what if I turn it around the right way? I don't know. LED speed mode plus and minus. So no, it doesn't do fan speeds by the look of it. Only does RGB. How are the rubber feet? Are they glued on or screwed? There's the remote control. Uh, how are the feet? Let's have a look. Let me put this away a moment. So it looks like the RGB element, if you go for the remote control, is going to be separate from the fan speed, which for some people is going to be fine. The thing is, you only need one um, PWM header. You don't need four or six or ten or whatever. Let's have a look at the feet. I haven't looked at the bottom yet, but there is a removable full length filter. So well, as good as you can get for full length anyway. So. That pulls out, so you've got your power supply uh, section here. And you can also mount another fan in there by the look of it. So pushing a little bit more air in, or exhausting, however you want to do it. And actually it's a quite a nice mesh filter there. 
I'm going to break that. Uh, the feet are rubber, and it looks like. Yeah, underneath those rubber pads, there's a screw, so you can remove those and take that section off if you need to. So yeah, those are removable. If you want to take them off and paint them or something, I don't know. Maybe you might want to. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty decent. No complaints there. And that's like a cable management channel. That's plastic. Sure. Yeah, someone will be in the Discord when they can. Bit tricky right now. Uh, it looks like that front panel does come off as well. There's two screws behind here. So you can, if you want to, uh, remove that. So next thing I'm going to do is let's grab a little power supply. And we'll fire this up and see what it looks like. Where's the other cat? He's in the box, isn't he? No. No, empty box. Mind you, Pop. Oh, yeah, the yeah. Poppy's gone walkabout as well. Uh, Michael T. Hello, Michael T. Three, sorry, five memberships. Oh, nice one, Michael T, for gifting the uh, memberships there. <coughs> Do you want to read I can't see him at the moment. Ash. I just realised oh, I am on the right screen. I am, but I can't see that one. Hang three. on a minute. So, uh, yeah, Michael T's gifted five memberships. So you basically now can get access to the uh, early content. And also you can have a VIP role on our Discord, which doesn't really get you a great deal, but it does make your name appear in green. Because green is the colour of money. As it is on here as well, actually. So uh, SPG33 was gifted a membership. David's Drones Adventures in Gaming was also um, awarded. Pooey Tiger won. Sugar Daddy and Welltail Mining. Thank you very much. This power supply is a very weird one. I was sent this ages ago by Thermal Take. And I'm not sure what's wrong with it, but it's got a weird smell to it. Like... I'm not sure what it smells like, but it's just got a very unusual aroma to it. It's a little SFX uh, 850 watt PSU. Oh, and a super chat. Oh, uh, there's a super chat as well from Michael T. 10 Aussie dollars. It says, <coughs> hi, Mike, Katie. <laughs> she hates that. Uh, Kitties and mothers, everyone have a great day. I've got a busy day and we'll catch up on the stream later. Cheers all. Thank you again, Michael. Much appreciated. I don't care what they say about you. I think you're a lovely man. That's uh, British humour, by the way. Uh, George uses cat pee on it. It doesn't smell like cat pee, but it does smell very similar. I suppose. Oh, I can't reach that case thing. And I've got my cables all tied around me. Let's see. I want to see what this looks like. These fans, if they're the same fans that they've used in some of the other Ions cases, which we've already done a couple of videos on, then I'm actually going to be quite pleased because they're actually quite nice fans and they've got some really nice RPM ranges on them. What's the stuff on it? Connect for, with this case if you had the project variable? Uh, Seasonic Connect. Um, I'm not sure. I've not seen a Seasonic Connect, to be honest with you. So. I, I'm not 100% on that. Uh, James says, I like that the glass is not tinted. Yeah, it's quite common these days that if you have a, uh, a PSU which, sorry, if you have a case which is white, they tend not to tint the glass. Whereas if you have a case which is black, it tends to have a, a very slight smoke tint. And I actually prefer, for these sort of cases, I actually prefer either a little bit of a kind of a white, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like a hue to the glass. Oh yeah. 
Uh, if I can see it, we're very clear. Okay, let's get this uh, power supply hooked up and try not to break anything. Uh, it's not as uh, as it stands like this specific version that we've got here. It is uh, seventy nine ninety nine. If you buy it, the black version, I think it's seventy five pounds. And either of the other versions, if you have it without the addressable RGB controller and without the fans, I think it's about sixty five. Which is about what the normal pricing is of Ion stuff. So. If you don't go without fans, it's about ten pounds cheaper. If you go without fans and a controller, it's about fifteen quid cheaper. So it's kind of within that ballpark. So let's fire this up. Glass isn't frosted, is it? Uh, no, frosted. That was the word I w wanted earlier. Oh, is that what we wanted? It said frosted question marks. I'm assuming it's about the glass. Sorry. So there we go. It's lit up, and actually, I quite like the fact that the three fans on the side, that one of them dips down into this basement section. That's quite a, quite a novel idea. And actually, I'm not sure if the um, the camera is quite doing it justice, but those fans have got a very nice, vivid look to them. And they're not... Well, at the moment, they're not being controlled at all. So they're just basically doing their own thing. They don't seem to be very noisy, which, which is also another good sign. Uh, it must be an auto mode, so can we change? Right, that's on or off. Light speed. Mode. Yeah, so we can switch through the various color cycle modes and types of color. So if you haven't got your, a motherboard with a built-in controller, you can use this one. Some nice looks there. I think as well, the fans have got like umpteen million RGBs in them because the center hub is doing something different from the rest of the fans. So you've got RGB in the outside ring, but you've also got RGB in the middle as well. Maybe see it better there where it's contrasting slightly more. Uh, these are 120 mil that are included, but you can put 140 mil fans in if you want to. The lights are not all on. The video looks dark. Can we get more lights in? Uh, the video—it's uh, because the the camera is compensating for the uh, the middle set. Well, because this is brighter than everything else around it. Yeah, we say some of the lights aren't on. That's because it's addressable, so it's turning on some and turning off some. It's got some very unusual patterns here, which you don't quite... Well, very rarely do you see this many patterns. Christ, it just keeps on going and going. This has got to be the most elaborate RGB controller I think I've ever seen. I was making calves go as well. That's kind of nice. So it spins around the inner hub and then accumulates on the outside. And it probably does that for umpteen million colours. And that's an opposing one. That's the same sort of thing. Let's find something... Uh, they can't go any higher. That is the highest they go. So that is the kind of fixed position. Yeah, I see what you mean. It could do with like that fan, this one being up higher, up here. But they're fit. If you add a radiator or something in, I think it's the view from the camera as well, because that looks yeah. like a really big gap. But when I look at it straight on, it's not much of a gap. Yeah, that's going to give you. Um, that looks like quite a big gap, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. When you look, yeah, the reality is it doesn't, yeah. I see what you mean. 
And there's a lot of different lighting styles and modes. Not sure what that is, like a twinkling star. You've got your classics. I do quite like the purples. Not sure if that's coming across on the camera. But that's quite a nice purple, actually. Oh, let's get rid of the uh, message on the screen. I wonder if I can turn the lights down. David Underhill, nice haircut. He's back now, he's your dad's back. Oh, well done. Nice to have a haircut, I think. You have more haircuts than anyone I know. Nice pink. That green's really bright. Oh, there's, this is the Twinkle Twinkle one as well. So rather than just being a static, uh, there's all kinds of weird, funky stuff going on here. Let's just have some unicorn puke in our life, shall we? Surprisingly, actually, those fans are moving a lot of air. But they're not really that noisy unless I get my microphone close. You probably hear wind noise. Perfect PC for Mike, no need for motherboard, CPU, or GPU, just RGB to play with. <laughs> David Underhill, do it yourself, haircut, facial buzz cut with peach clippers. Nice. That sounds like a that sounds like a plan. So again, the, I'm actually I'm pretty pretty pleased with this. I think they've done uh, they've done a really good job. But the only thing is, they've done a really good job, but the kind of the big, big kind of elephant in the room, I was trying to think of what it was, but it's an elephant, isn't it? The big elephant in the room is the fact that it's 80 quid. Now for 80 quid, there is a lot of competition in the market, an awful lot. So it's going to be one of those situations where, yes, it's got four fans included. It's a nice look. It's got a lot of TG. You've got the option for the um, the Project Zero style kind of wiring going on. Hi, right, Poppy. What do you think of this case? Do you like it? What do you think? Do you think it's going to be a hit or a miss? Poppy's the expert. She knows all the things. Don't you, Pops? She does. She rules the roost here. Uh, input cable with power adapter. Bacon asks, are you planning on building this? Your white 4070 Super would look great. Uh, my white 4070 Super is going back to the uh, the MSI peoples. Right, let's put the. I'm going to put the fans on the lowest speed. I think that is, uh, can you, buy you can hear them. Can you buy matching fans for the top mount? Um, that is a good question. I don't know is the honest answer. I will check in with the people at IONS and see what the deal is. I'm thinking possibly because this is the third case now that I've seen with these specific fans. And I think this is possibly the best implementation so far. You need some plastic bits you can hang from the top, I think. <laughs> Um, it, it is, but I don't think it's designed to be. So not as in a quick release thing. So I think because the, it needs that support. There is a couple of screws at the top and it looks like there's a couple of screws on the side, but I don't think it's designed to come out as standard. I think it's supposed to be there as a kind of basically a, a structural piece. I like that they put an extra cut out here at the front for your graphics cards. So this is something which a lot of cases miss out on. Having a pass through here so you can run your big chunky cables up to make it look nice and slick. I think that's probably harking back to the whole Project Zero aspect of it. But having said that, the Project Zero bit, I think those actually might be for... Yeah, I don't know. So you think with a 
I need to see what the motherboards are like, but I'm guessing that the placement is basically the reverse of what they would normally be. So if that is the case, this section here is going to be more for micro ATX, whereas it should be down here. But I need to see what the boards are like. Let me turn those fans down. Those fans are actually moving a surprising amount of air. Oh yeah. Which bit is that there? Yeah. Move it a bit closer. So that's moving and that's actually oh. pulling air that way. And that's it's not even in line with it. That's not even on the back of it. <laughs> what was that, Poppy Dora? It's probably best not to do that, is it? Let's just throw something else in the fans. Jesus. <laughs> let's get the cheese grater out. Does it slice cheese? Yeah. So yeah, I think this is a... Uh, is that going to be your new screening case? I don't know. It might be. There is a temptation for it. I really wanted to go back to a black case in the background. But... This might tick the boxes because... I can still put 420mm rads in the top, which is handy for testing purposes. Um, quite nice, easy access. I'm not too sure how the wiring's going to go, but the basement section's huge. Well, and it's perforated. The that is something which I am thinking about, yeah. The, uh, the ventilated section at the bottom, especially with the lights on, you are going to see a lot of the muck and mess down there. Now that isn't entirely a bad thing because like even with this one here I, I can still see some there can't see you can't see, see it but I can see it <coughs> so yeah I don't know I think I would have preferred to see this bottom section being uh, solid but that's easy to rectify because all you need to do is get some um, some card or some um, some plastic and just line it or maybe even just like sticky tape, white tape. Just put white tape behind it and it would look, well, it'd look normal. I like the design. Any rubber covers, cable access covers for this slot? No, there's no rubber grommets at all. Which I think kind of makes sense because if they have gone with that kind of Project Zero look, it's kind of, the rubber grommets are probably going to get in the way to some extent if you've got someone who's like, edge case scenarios where a connector is just slightly too close to a bit of metal so actually having a rubber grommet there would make it even harder to manage the point being when a motherboard is actually installed in there it's going to cover up pretty much all of that section so you're not really going to see much of that stay vacant new mirror new background case please <laughs> the ordinary dude and our wolfman tt is 100 percent better looking the thermal takes better looking I th yeah, I do like this, but I don't know if I like it enough to replace the thermal tape. There are definitely elements of this which make a lot of sense. And actually, when I saw it on the uh, the Amazon page, I looked at it and I was thinking, yeah, okay. But actually looking at it in person, even though it is empty, um, it does look very nice. And I am slightly somewhat on the fence about whether or not I do use this as the streaming PC build. I like the side fans. That was one of the things which I, I was missing on there because I think they've missed out a trick on that. They could have put exhaust fans on the, on the Series 500 to exhaust out the back. There is almost enough room. If they made it just slightly longer, they could have done it. And I think it would have been a much nicer case for it. But I do kind of like this, like, edge, or quite, you know, slightly cleaner lines. Like, it's more angular. What about TT new case, which has curved glass fronts? Uh, yeah, there's a, a Thermal Take Tower 300, which has got a, um, like, a hexagonal glass. I, I'm not too sure how I feel about that, I'll be honest. I've seen it, and I'm like, hmm... Thermal Take do some weird and wonderful things. I like it that they keep on trying new things, but some of them I do kind of question 
where they actually get the ideas for doing it. Because, but how do you connect the GPU power cables? Right, GPU power cables. Um, well, it would be the normal setup, so you'd either have them coming up from the underneath here. I rock that forward. So either through these pass-throughs here, depending where your GPU connectors are, or you've got that one there at the front, so you can run a cable from your power supply underneath up through here, and then straight into your graphics card. I don't think at the moment this supports the um, the GPU pass-through as well. It might do. Some of those there or there, they might support it. It's one of those emerging technologies that is so kind of open at the moment that I guess kind of all bets are off in terms of what is going to work where. But yeah, I think this is... Uh, Too much glass doesn't leave much room for cabling. Yeah, I guess that is why it's kind of got that zero cable thing. So having the cables pass through the back, if you decide to go through that route, would make it particularly clean looking. And like, you might see a couple of cables from the fans here, but that in itself is somewhat unavoidable. It does remind me a lot of the, um, the Techware VXR. And I really did like that case. I didn't really want to get rid of it, but it was... Oh, they do look wobbly, don't they, the fans? Oh, yeah. Is it the camera has stable or <laughs> no, the fans? That is something which they often do. They don't put those those labels on very well. And once you see it, you can't unsee yeah. it then. Yeah, once they're, they're not centralised very well. But it's nice that they've got a little bit of RGB lighting around the sides. Break out those swap fans. Yeah. The SWAT fans in here would be uh, would be awesome. So I could have three one forties in the top, another one forty in the back. Maybe no, it's all one twenties there. What are the measurements? Uh, measurements. I'll have to get the tape measure from young Catherine or Kate over there. <laughs> I'll have to crack open the tow drone in a minute. Yeah, get the tow brewing. The Christmas tow brewing. Guts and back on your own. Right, measurements. Are you not having any? So, se 17 inches from the front to the back. So that is uh, 43 centimetres, 430 mil. Uh, the glass front, side to side, so that's basically the same width as the case. So looking at nine and a half inches, just what Bob likes, um, and 244 millimeters. And actually, how many? 244, oh, I wonder if I fit over on my desk. I don't think it will. On the top, 244, right. It would fit in my desk, but I, the side fans would be a bit wasted. So, yeah, a bit pointless on my desk. Uh, height. Height! You put it in the biscuit cupboard. Oh, do I? I'll scoop it out. Uh, so, height, we are looking at... Uh, uh. Just slightly over 18 and a half. And... Uh, 47 and a half centimetres or 475 mil. Any other measurements while I'm in measurement mood? Thank you, Dave Aiken, for the two pounds. Says good night, mubbers. Yeah, get some sleep. You're a parent now. Can't be staying up late nights on the weekend. I'm going to eat a bit of Tobro and celebrate the two pound super chat. You right, Kath? Knock yourself out. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Sorry, I'm just enjoying this table in a minute. I'll eat it as quick as I can. Hmm. 
Very good. Do you like a toe bone? All right, Dave. That's proper Bristol now, isn't it? All right, Dave, how you doing, mate? What's wrong, Dave? Oh, Ryan built that. Right, we'll leave it. Are you okay? Right. Oh, can Dave have a look? Yeah, do you want to look, Dave? You haven't been on camera yet. Hey, have you? What do you think, Dave? This is Dave. What do you reckon, dude? Ooh, careful. Mind his little nub. Mind your nose and your ears. Dave. That's right, he's got whiskers. Whiskers for sense in danger. Yeah, but he's only got little ones. Is that why they're little? Yeah. <gasps> Dave. No Daves have been hurt in the making of this broadcast production. Dave, careful! Look, Grampy does it. <coughs> Gotta be strong. Strong like ox, not weak like cat. <laughs> Aww. Is that good enough? For you? It looks nice in there, Dave, actually. Let me uh, turn those fans off. Be a good GPU support. Oh, you think no? Dave, the GPU support. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Sorry, Dave. I can't let you do that. Now, if you were a clever cat, you'd know that's a reference from Space 2001. But he's not, so. There you go. That's only fans. <laughs> Buffering, emotional damage, strong like ox, and almost as smart. <laughs> Oops, a glitch in the matrix. Is it gone again? Oh, Mick's off. Who? Mick? Yeah. Cheers, Mick. He says, good night all. We'll watch the full show in the morning. You are a great bunch of people. Thank you very much. Cat scan passed. William Bodie says, I'm munching on liquid fruit, one litre of fax. <laughs> nice. Davy Jones. <clears throat> Fans with cat size. Patented. Cats says, if you were clever, you would realise that only old farts remember that movie. Ouch. Right, Dave. How's about... Look what we got here. There is a removable filter lot on the bottom. You like that? It's good, isn't it? Easy access, easy to clean, keeps the dust out. And it has louvres, or it's louvered, louvered? It has a louvered effect. So it's gonna actually channel the air towards the front, it would seem, for some bizarre reason. Why you'd wanna do that, I don't know. Anyway. That fits in there. There we go. Happy days. Cat tray. Yes, yeah, a litter tray. For cleaning out litters. Give it a quick shake and uh, jobs the good one, as they say. He is crazy, he's reincarnated. Dave is the new star of PC Building Show. He's pretty cool. Aren't you, Dave? He's certainly grown big. I want him to be a main hue, so he's not really growing to the speed I want yet. He should be at least the size of flame by now. You've got a bit of singed hair there, buddy. Or you been, oh, you're magnetised, aren't you? You okay? You don't look so white now against the white case. You look a bit sort of grubby. Oh, you happy now? You like that case? This one, we keeping this one now? Is that the deal? I think we might be. When cats take over the world, Dave will have Mike in the case. Yeah, put the glass on quick before he escapes. <laughs> Lord Erectus says, Dave doesn't eat show. I'm not, I don't know, eh? Dave doesn't eat show. Mark Berry says, time to have a nap, don't blame you. Dave says, this case is perfect. It's Dave approved, isn't it? Do you like it? 
What do you think? Is it all right? He is a cute cat. Bless him. Dumb as rocks, but he's cute. No, he's not. He's dumb as rocks, isn't he, mate? High five. High five? No, he's no. disgusted with you, though. Not doing that today. That. Right, I'm going to put this away. So what else do we get in here? We get some uh, cable straps for cable management. You get the instructions and you get a bunch of... Um, Screws, unfortunately black screws rather than being chrome or silver or whatever, but I guess it's not the end of the world. And I think that is, uh, that's kind of it, isn't it? Yeah. Didn't see that there was a motherboard mode on here, but I'm guessing there, there is one. Normally you can switch between the two, but maybe it is... Oh, of course, the reset switch, that was what it was, so the reset switch, actually, let's turn that back on. It's funny, the monitor just turned off then. Uh, so press the reset button, yeah, so the reset button acts as a remote control as well. So I'm guessing if I press and hold, yeah, flashes, so that would now be in motherboard control mode. So if you had this connected to your own motherboard uh, addressable RGB, then it would then be displaying whatever your motherboard does. Interesting thing to see, does it remember the setting? Because that's actually quite important. So I'm going to turn the power off. This is to simulate your PC shutting down. So let that do it. So what we want to see now is when we turn it back on is for the fans to be spinning, but with no RGB. Because it should be taking advantage of the actual uh, motherboard controller. Now, potentially this might not work as intended because we don't physically have a motherboard connected. So it might get to the point where it realizes that there's no signal and actually defaults to going back to the onboard controller, if that makes sense. I'm not sure if it does. Did that make sense? I turned the power supply back on. And we have nothing. So to change your RGB, you must reset the PC? Nope. <laughs> Possibly. Why did that not come back on? Okay, I think I finally killed the power supply or the socket. Ah, there we go. That's better. Must have tripped the power supply somehow. So that's a good test. So it that the power supply was completely off. So it has come back on and it has remembered the settings. So. If you want to just take the remote control and uh, throw it away, you can do. Sorry, the picture went in, I just noticed that. Fuse went bang. Screen went to Elgato. Yeah, that's the, the socket over there. The camera, this monitor, this power supply, all of that is on a trailing socket over there. And there's something really weird with that socket. Every now and then, if I turn something on or off, I lose the connection. So it must have briefly tripped the camera so the Elgato didn't get a signal from the camera so it just shows the Elgato sign. <laughs> Elgato adverty. Go on, I'll have another chunk. Okay then. Before you uh, inhale it. I've only got one chunk. Oh is it? Oh don't worry, don't worry now. Where's yours? Oh. I Sorry, I thought you had a, oh, I thought you had the last of it. I'm going to have one more chunk while I put this away. And, uh... Hmm. <coughs> Good stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Trevor Mundell. How you doing, Trevor? Says, hi, Catherine and Mike. Um, good evening. I like the case. Nice. I'm going to get one for myself. Trevor. Happy days. I hopefully you enjoy it. It's an interesting case. Ions are doing that these days. They're getting some... Sorry, I'm like a freaking hamster. <laughs> Stuffing me face full of chocolate. Elgato. Oh, yeah, Ions are doing some um, some interesting stuff recently. Because they come out when they first come out. And it was just like, 
cheap cases. Like cheap, cheap, cheap cases. But they were great because there was a budget market which needed um, to be fulfilled. Let's unplug that. And yeah, they, they fitted the bill perfectly. Whereas now, it seems they're doing a little bit of just aiming a little bit higher. And it seems to be paying off, I reckon. Um, well, sorry, you have to read out James's question. I can't see it at the moment. Now, that could be something to do with the um, TV HDMI. Yeah, it could be to do with copyright protection and the fact that the computer possibly recognises the fact that it's not just a generic display. It actually probably recognises the specific monitor string. So it could be that it's um, detecting as a TV and it's some sort of copyright protection. Because YouTube, well, sorry, not YouTube, um, what are they called? Alphabet, the owners of YouTube and all that, they are very much clamping down on kind of copyright protection and advertising and all that kind of stuff. So it could be the fact they're recognizing the, um, the, the connected device is a television, which then also has its own kind of individual licensing rules and regulations. Sorry, Dave, you can't go back in the case. My apologies, friend. Dave's watching himself on telly. I'm thinking, <laughs> don't bloody choke on it, you moron. You okay? Yeah. That's what you get. She actually put a whole chunk of Toblerone in her mouth at once and was showing off to say, look what I've got in my mouth. And then proceeded to choke on it. <laughs> Dipstick. <laughs> you got watery eyes now. No, it wasn't that bad. Hey, Dave. I think that was Otis. That was it. Otis? Where is Otis? Oh, is he in a box? Oh no, he's in, oh, is he? Otis! Hey. <coughs> Got me choking on the toe bro now. Mark Berry says, I look handsome, lol. Thanks uh, for that. Maybe standing on your keyboard a bit. Yeah. Oh, get off the keyboard! No, that's alright, it's turned off anyway. I thought I'd address that minor issue. Uh, where's the back panel? There we go. Uh, back panel, in case you didn't see it earlier. So you got that uh, very similar mesh to what is on the, what did I say it was, the Lian Li 216. So yeah, it goes all together. De uh, Dom Bar. Howdy, how you doing? James Mishnay says, fight the power of DRM and all that jazz sucks. It does, you're all right. What was that? George, what happened? I don't know. Sound like a sound dropped. Um, James says, low calf's not a moron. What's that? You okay? You okay? Stuart Cleary says, calf laughs like my wife. I don't know whether I feel sorry for you or... <laughs> <laughs> Bless her. So there we go, there it is all put back together. Let's get this thing put back in the box. Maisie, move. Thank you. One, two, three. One, two, three. Cats in the box. Oh, I shouldn't have thrown that there, should I? A bit of foil. 
Oh, for goodness sakes. Come on, cats, give me a break. If, if any of you wonder why there isn't so much content being created at the moment, there's three reasons why. That's it. Six reasons why, really. <coughs> Mike's just eating too much tabling. Yeah. Um, right, how did this come in the box? Do you want to show him, Otis? So, where are the feet? Can anybody remember how I got this out? My uh, my reboxing skills are failing me right now. I think it's going to be that way round. Oh, something didn't sound very good then. That definitely doesn't go that way. Hmm. You've ordered this game, you lazy. So if it doesn't go on the front, it must go on the top. Or the bottom. Yeah. Tried the top, didn't you? Let's try that. Ah, that's what that noise was. Uh, that's got the indentation for that part there. So that, it on the other side? that goes there. Perfect. Perfect. <coughs> Oi, stop playing with that Leanne Lee controller. Gosh darn it. Let's play with this on the floor. Come on. Down. Right, there's a hole there. Oh, that does go there. That's very snug. <clears throat> now we have got an actual, quite a few of these cases. I was going to say a ton, but it's not a ton because they're not actually that heavy. But we have a few more of these ions cases and I've already done two videos already. So there is the KZ, sorry, yeah, KZ33TF. Uh, that video will be going out to patrons probably in a day or two. Well, it might have gone out already, actually. So patrons will have it. Members will get that uh, in about a week's time. Sorry about noise, everybody. Ah, they've had the G1. So there's the KZG1, which is their uh, gaming series, which is a very, very quirky case. I said the word quirky. I'm sure if I said it once, I said it 10 times in that video. It was a, uh, it was quite an interesting little, little setup. It really was. <sighs> right. Yeah, I was waiting for you to do a thumbnail on that one. You must have done it. Shame. The cats aren't following quality assurance. They're not. No, they are actually a pain in the proverbial. It's, it's very difficult to get a work done because this is, believe this is well, this is England, and despite what you may have seen on TV, although if you've watched something like Carnation Street. You're probably not a million miles off. Uh, houses are pretty small, especially if you're a kind of a middle to lower income family, then yeah, you don't have a huge amount of room. And this is a 1930s house, got an old one. They're usually quite big compared to new ones. Yeah. So there, yeah, basically there's not a lot of room. So this room is very small and with six cats in it and them having their own individual boxes and stuff, it gets a little bit cramped. So yeah, it's trouble. It's spring too. You'll be out. Lord Erector says, "Are you going to review the shoe case, Mike?" I doubt it. I don't think I'm on course. Uh, Cooler Masters' good li good list of people they want to work with after I basically ruined the review of the uh, Q300L and also the Masterbox 311. I think it was, was it 311, 350, one of them. Yeah, that was uh, not good. snow people talking about snow we haven't had any snow uh we are supposedly supposed to have storm aisha tomorrow uh starting sunday evening but the weather is supposed to be getting worse from i think kind of overnight tonight into tomorrow morning then kind of ramping up sunday evening into monday morning 
So I'd be interested to see what happens. Bristol, in effect, is a, quite a flattish area. There's a few places where there's a, a, a hill, but in general, it tends to be quite a flat area. And you've got the Welsh valleys and mountains, and then you've got kind of like the Yorkshire Dells and what have you, and some of the places in Gloucester. So we are kind of like in a little bit of a bowl, really. Get a little bit coming in off the sea for the coastal area of Bristol, but where we are, a little bit inland, it's relatively flat. So the weather kind of tends to pass over us or get stopped when the places. So, yeah, we don't know. We generally don't get much snow. Um, it's very rare. Unless the country is absolutely covered in the stuff, and then we do get some, obviously, because there's no escape in it. But generally, we don't tend to get much snow. And also, when it comes to bad weather, mostly, again, it kind of seems to pass us by. We don't get those extremes of rain or sun or snow or anything, really. It's just generally quite bland. <laughs> but at least it's somewhat predictable. Because even if you pick up the newspaper and they say, oh, all this stuff's gone on and there's hundreds of pounds, hundreds of millions of pounds worth of damage. And you're like, when did that happen? Missed it. Fortunately. And for those people that do suffer from that sort of stuff on a regular basis, um, I do feel for you. Dave, get out of there. Dave. Right, well, while I'm up, we'll take some questions and also uh, we'll have a quick look as well of something. Oh, Dave came in says, really windy here in Stoke at the moment. Oh, sorry to hear that, Craig. That sucks. John Barr, I like to post website links for PC case here. I'd like to know what people think of my case. Uh, yeah, you can try it. Should, it might be okay. I don't think you can always... I don't think you can post links unless you're a moderator. Maybe you've had it in your possession before, Mike. Oh. Well, um, if you put the link in there, but take off the end of it, like the .com or .co.uk or whatever, and just write it in, so D-O-T. What is it, Box? What are you doing? Talking to him, she? Oh, she's talking to Otis. I have no idea what she's saying. Alessa says it's currently 16 degrees Celsius inside my house. My little space heaters are working overtime. 16 degrees C inside. Man, that's pretty chilly. Currently we're at 22.3 <coughs> and the humidity is 54%. So it's actually quite good. Normally, this room is in the sort of... I don't know, 60 to 70% range for humidity because it's England and it's basically damp. Unfortunately, that's the way it is. Um, this is the open source response time testing tool. So this very cool little device has basically five little photo sensors, which you essentially kind of crudely just strap this onto your monitor, plug in the USBs. Come on, Dave. Come on. Come on, you got your claw stuck. You're too little. Man, these cats yeah. <laughs> doing my head in. There you go. Lord Erexus says damp around the chalk strap. <laughs> David Anderson says 34 degrees C. Wow. Stuart says 21.5 C here. That's nice. About 22 degrees, I think, is, uh, in the hallway, is a nice temperature. Right, I need a USB cable micro usb which is uh just checking to make sure no it's not got anything in it donbar might have to be a copy and paste job for others to see okay we'll have a look firestorm says no wind in hereford yet if he sends it to your email yeah if you send the link either on a discord or to the email uh, you can do that Bless your heart, Ugly Bob. He has gifted five memberships. That's very kind of you. So Charles Ballard has been gifted a membership by Ugly Bob. <coughs> Atomic Sub has also been gifted membership. Paul Dominguez and 67 Steve and Antonio... I can never pronounce this. Kipage? Sipage? I'm not too sure. Doombar says, I am in the Discord. Excellent. Post it in there. Um, if you tag calf, so put at Mrs. Mike's unboxing, and then she can then post it into the, the chat. And maybe we can have a look at it. We will see. Lord of Rectus, will you review the quad stellar case, Mike? I don't know. It's one of those things I 
I'm a little bit... Maisie and Poppy, stop fighting. <laughs> Otis, what are you doing? Come here, my friend. Come here. Otis. Oi. What are you doing? He's a cool cat. He's uh, he's very, what I would call, stonky. He's got a bit chunky, a bit muscly. I like him. He's cool. Who Otis? Yeah. He's muscular, not chunky. Wow. That's Steve. Muscular, Steve, chunky. Steve is chunky. Whatever. 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 Charles says, the temperature in St. Louis has dropped a degree to minus eight Celsius. <whistles> Darn. I'm going to plug this in so you can see what this thing does. I'm not sure if it actually will work while Discord is running. I think that's probably a bad idea, but hey, I'm full of bad ideas. So this you strap onto your monitor that you want to review or test. So stick that on there. I'll hold the USB cable in place. And basically what you do is you run the software. If I can find it. There we are. So OSRTT, which is pre-installed. I'm not gonna do a scientific version of this, but just so you can see what it does and how it works. So you've got all these options on here, uh, response time test settings, so you can do various different test runs, capture times, you can choose whether you've got VSync enabled and sort of things, uh, results, folder, where that goes. Basically, if you start the response time testing, so if you're using a monitor which has overdrive, if you're using overdrive you kind of you want to know that you've got overdrive enabled and any other settings so this little window here allows you to put in the mode manually so i at the moment i think overdrive is enabled so i'm going to check my monitor go into the menu and overdrive is currently on so i will type od on this is for a reference uh, you can put in extra info but don't really need to so click on continue <coughs> and basically you get a black screen or blank screen so it needs to be a blank screen because it needs to uh, check out the response time so it sends a signal to the monitor in the terms of a change of color and the tool basically responds so when you're ready there's a message on there that says press button to start the test so we basically press the button Dave get down or out USB cables are for life, not just for Christmas. David? No, in, he's behind there. Uh, Cheers, David Underhill. Bless you. See you later. And hi, Marco. How you doing? <coughs> <laughs> A letter says, during the winter, I let my girlfriend use the bathroom first so she can warm up the toilet seat. That's what I have a daughter for. Yeah, David Underhill, enjoy your, your day and your new haircut. So you probably notice in the background, the monitor is changing the uh, the brightness levels and essentially it does hundreds and hundreds of things which normally you'd have to do manually yourself and have a sensor on the screen and record it and all that. But it's really clever. The software basically accumulates all the data and when this is done, it's going to spit out a page of information which I'll put on the screen so you can see it. But it will give you an idea of what a monitor is like and you can change settings and then record the data and obviously you can compare the data between the two so some monitors um, are pretty awful when it comes to using overdrive which is normally a feature for increasing the response time so overdrive is basically just driving the monitor harder but quite often when you drive a monitor harder you get undesirable results so the kind of you get like a lag of the previous rgb value against the new one in terms of frames per second. It's quite complicated and I don't fully understand it if I'm totally honest, but I'm kind of getting the general kind of uh, the feel of how it works. But a little bit of testing will go a long way. So again, it's gonna take a few minutes to do that. Do you want to have a look at that case in the meantime? Or yeah, where is that case? I'll add it now. What case is it? Cap's gonna post the case that was mentioned a little bit earlier. Uh, watercooling.co.uk Oh dear. Uh, Cougar Panzers G. That's an old one, isn't it? Isn't that been around for a long, long time? 
I think I'm pretty sure that was on um, on Jay's two cents a long time ago. I'll show you what's you on there. Or tested this one. I've not tested. I've looked at something similar. I don't think they even make them anymore. I don't think those have been available for a long time. And the reason I say that is because looking at the picture there, it's got RGB fans, which kind of RGB fans haven't been a thing now for at least really five years or more. So I think this is, um, yeah, slightly obsolete now. But I'm pretty sure Jay's Two Cents done a big water cool build in that. But I don't, I've not reviewed it and I don't think I've got any plans, so I don't think it even is available anymore. Right, that is still testing values. So there's a little display on the screen, so it says how many runs it's done. You can set it to as many runs as you want. So to get a, a broadish amount of results, you need to do three runs of the whole cycle. But you can set it to like a thousand or whatever you want to, really, as, however long you've got. Now, when it's done, it should spit out some results, which we'll take a look at. Now, this monitor is the electric, or electric, yeah, electric, electric, the 4K 60 hertz thing, which is like super cheap. I think it's like 130 pounds or something. So it's a 4K panel, um, IPS, and it's only 60 hertz, as you kind of expect. But it wasn't too bad. It was okay. And when I reviewed it, I'm... I said, like, it obviously, it isn't really a gaming monitor. You can play games on it, but it's not really suited for it. It's more suited for office work or streaming or just enjoying content. And in a minute, you'll see the results of the response time and the overshoot and basically its characteristics to see basically how well it does. So the theory is that you set it to an FPS in the test and it will try to make it so that the kind of game engine, which this is running in, will run at that speed. So you're kind of synchronizing the inputs with the display, and then the job of the monitor is to keep up with that. So if you're running a 60 FPS test, the job of the monitor is to maintain accuracy in the output colors, or the, the cut, the, the RGB value, or the brightness value, however you want to look at it, for 60 frames per second without really deviating from that. This one doesn't do that, even remotely close to that. Stop playing with the cables. I think they got ball. Stop playing with the cables or the ball. You can play with the ball, it's fine. Where's the ball? He ain't got a ball, he's got cables. He's got pom -pom. Come on, get out of it, pom-pom brains. I've got a sneaking suspicion that that's actually crashed. <laughs> it's probably not the best of ideas to run it with OBS. And actually, I think that screen... Is that still going? I'm pretty sure that has crashed. Yes, it has. How do I come out of that now? <laughs> I have no idea how I come out of this. So, UT response time test. Let's see if I can close that. Has that closed it? Yes, it has. Right. <coughs> so, one or more test results failed to process. Okay. Right, I'm going to ignore that. In the meantime. In the meantime. Is that going to rerun again? Yeah, I'll do it for one run now. Ah. There's the there's the graph that you get at the end. But that's not the one I wanted to show. So set it to run. Start continue. Oh. O D on. You don't have to type in O D on, you can type in whatever you want really. You can see the keyboard. Uh, continue. Press button to start the test. There we go. Charles Ballard, do you want to answer that? Backlight strobing continue. Press button, yeah. I think I've broken it. Hello, there we go. Uh, Charles, where are we? 
Charles brought up Mike. That's nothing. We hit minus 17 Celsius earlier in the week. Right. Right. The last thing on that. Right. Hugh Luttrell, you're only a few hours from me. No, last thing on that. That is Next the last question. thing on there. And I've been gifted a membership. Ah. Is it that? No. How do I take full advantage of it? I do can't I see that. Do anything or just go to your page and click on things to be membership exclusive? Uh, right. Basically, ah, there we go. So the question is, yeah, I'm gifted membership. Right. So take advantage of the membership. Um, if you're on Discord, message either myself or uh, Kath and you'll get your Discord membership upgraded. If you're on like a newbie or member level, you'll be upgraded to VIP. You don't really get a great deal from that, but we're more likely to take notice of you if we see your name highlighted in the chats. Uh, you also get early access to videos. So that is probably the key thing. So where at the moment we're working on a schedule of ideally about three weeks worth of videos in advance. So that's three working days. So 15 videos that are uploaded to watch no not for members they get five i know i'm getting to that okay so if you're a patreon member then you get even earlier access so you get those basically 15 days before everybody else then members get access to those videos about five to ten days depending on what it is sometimes they come earlier normally it's five days early so you're getting it a week before everybody else so that is what the channel membership gets you you can also use emojis in the chat should you wish to other than that, at the moment, memberships don't really have anything else other than the fact that you will get our undying love and affection. And obviously, if you're putting things into the chat and we notice that your name is a different color, we shouldn't really do that. But because we notice in the chat that your name is a different color and you are a member and you're, uh, you're kind of helping us, then we are obviously more inclined to try and help you as best we can. Whereas if you're not a member, then... Obviously, we will try and help you, but it's like anything. You are effectively a VIP in the community. So that is essentially what it comes down to. We might try and do other things as time goes on. We did have it so that at one point, if you're a member of the channel for X amount of time, then like come Christmas or certain occasions, we might send you something as a gift. But um, that, that was Beanie Hats this year. Yeah, it was Beanie Hats this year, so we were doing things like that and... Previously, we've done things like hoodies and t-shirts and what have you. So there's various things that potentially you could get, but there's nothing kind of set in stone currently. Hopefully that answers your question. I think this doesn't work when OBS is running, <laughs> which is potentially going to be an issue because otherwise, how do I record what is actually happening on the screen? Yes, that is going to be a predicament. So I'm glad I actually tried this because otherwise when I try to do an actual a thing, I'd have the brunt of this. Kath would be going, <laughs> rawr, test timed out. Right, I'm going to close that. Let's do it. Oh, there's So basically if you subscribe then you get invited to the Christmas dinner. Yeah. We don't have Christmas dinner. We don't, we don't even have Christmas dinner really. Oh, Rick's been a member for two and a half years. Jeez, Rick. Bless you. Uh, oh, I turned that keyboard off, didn't I? Because the cats, they've gone to sleep now, haven't they? Oh, no, no, they're playing in the hallway or upstairs. Right, the press button, is this it? Backlight strobe ring, continue. Failed to calibrate light level. <laughs> I give up. It, clearly, this doesn't like OBS being on, so I'm going to give it up. Because of that big light. Failed to calibrate light level. My surprise may not be in a usable range. I give up. Oh, maybe it's because the overdrive's on. I'll turn off the overdrive. This is very boring, I know. I'm sorry. But I'm learning. Ah, free sync is on. That might make a difference. Test settings, calibrate brightness. Why is there strobing? 
too high and reset. Can the brightness be too high? Where is that light? Oh well. Do 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 do. Talk amongst yourselves. I can't. Yeah, he bloody is. I don't know where he gets the money for it. I think he's won the lotto and just not told us. Too low, too low. This is the stupidest thing. Because the calibration thing, the window is right in the middle. This is why we don't do the stuff like this live. And like this. Perfect. Perfect. Right, start. No OD. Continue. Checking light level. Checking system latency. Running gamma test, is it going to crash there? Nope, it's running the gamma test. Right, <laughs> don't look at it ever again. And it might work, you never know. Uh, Mookie MC says hello all. How you doing, Mookie MC? Good to see you in the chat. Uh, what else? I'm trying to think what else has happened this week. This week seems like somewhat of a blur. I'm trying to think. There's other things what I, I was thinking. I really must mention that in the stream. And I didn't make any notes. Because all my notes are over on the whiteboards there, which I've run out or rubbed out. Oh, I did the uh, review for the Endgame Gear keyboard that you saw in last week's stream, the KB65HE. I love that keyboard. I really do love that keyboard. The only thing it puts me off is the fact that at the moment, we still don't have like a unifying RGB software that the Microsoft one was supposed to be. It was supposed to be the hero and come in and tie all these devices together, but it seems that it hasn't done that at all. It's basically been out for about a year now. The, uh, I can't even think what they call it now. There's a lighting thing in the Microsoft control panel. Uh, ambient lighting, no. Something like that anyway. But it's supposed to be like, it would, look at all your RGB devices and make them all synchronized together. When that happens, I think it's going to be great because a lot of the things, I like to have my RGB basically just minimalized, like one application to rule them all. So like MSI Center or Armory Crate. So like this PC is running Armory Crate and it has got an ASUS monitor, sorry, an ASUS keyboard, ASUS mouse, ASUS motherboard. So it's all kind of nicely, easily to do in one place. My other PC over there, MSI motherboard, MSI keyboard, MSI mouse. Um, there's something else as well. It's very boring, but I, it's just easy because I go there and go, RGB, I would turn it all off, turn it on. I like it. I don't want to have like umpteen pieces of software. And unfortunately, some of these other devices that are really, really good, they have their own software, which you kind of have to install. And you just end up having like all these different pieces of software. My son, sorry, our son, I should say, this week suffered at the fate of a steel series mouse where he's in a similar boat so he's got msi motherboard corsair cooler um keychron keyboard steel series mouse some other brand of headset um there's some other little controller thing he's got on his desk for audio like a, a dac and I'm sure there's numerous other things um, that he's got as well. They all have their own little ecosystem. And it came crashing down th this week. The SteelSeries software managed, managed to actually do a software update and corrupt the mouse firmware. And it was completely unrecoverable. So it's just that this stuff is all getting way too complicated. It'd be nice to just go back to having just hardware buttons. Like press a button to increase DPI or press a button to change the color. I kind of miss that a little bit. And that was a downside about the um, Endgame Gear keyboard, that if you wanted to make any changes to the software, you had to install the application. You could not do any of it from the keyboard itself. And once you've got it set up to your liking, you can then uninstall the software. But it's still the fact that you've got to install the software in the first place. And I guess if you're a Corsair IQ user, you kind of know that feeling already because you're already, already in that boat. 
So yes, it's uh, it's not not great. This, you don't think much about my picked up some extreme. This one. No, that one. Not mine. That one. No, that one. <laughs> God, I so. It's been a long day. Where's the rally tonight? Yeah, I'm not sure where a rally is. And Giorgio. Uh, Giorgio, I gain from distance at 65, I gain from this with a 65 inch OLED, I use a 3 meter USB-C for keyboard, do you think that long cable is a problem? Actually 4 meter would be the best. Um, for keyboards and mice you're probably not too bad, they say that the USB length, <coughs> ideally, maximum length on the USB cable is 5 meters, without using some form of repeater. So I'm actually, I can show you what a USB repeater cable looks like. I actually use one here in the studio, just in case I need to plug in something which is a little bit further away. So I've got a cable, which is USB, well, which I've probably just pulled. And uh, so there, here is the cable. So I have it bunched up behind the monitor. So if I need to plug something in on the desk when I'm doing some filming, then I can do it. So it is powered. So you can see it's got power going to it. And yeah, plug in a USB device. And <laughs> this is a five meter powered um, USB 2 active extension. You can get USB 3 ones, but they're more expensive. And for me, for a keyboard or a mouse or something like that, USB 2 is absolutely fine. But yeah, this is, uh, if you want to go to five meters, you probably want an active repeater, something along these lines. You can actually put power into the side of it as well. So it takes a little barrel jack. So you can plug in some additional power there if you want to, but that's the sort of thing you might want to consider if you're getting problems. If you're not getting problems, then you're probably okay. Again, five meters is the um, the kind of agreed on specification for signal strength on USB. At least it is for USB 2. It might be different now for USB 3, although I think USB 3 actually has the ability to carry more power. So more power means less loss in the signal. So USB 3 might be better, although USB 3 bandwidth is going to be higher. So there's more data to actually lose, if you see what I mean, or lose the, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Lose the integrity, the integrity of the data. Should we talk about Willis? Otis, what are you doing? Come here, Bab. Is it done yet? Yeah, yeah, it's done. So I'm going to, the, uh, the thing is done. So I am going to pull over, this is the results that come up at the end. So let me drag that onto the, uh, the screen here. And let's go over to the desktop screen screen. And close this down so I can see what is actually on the screen. Let's close, oh crap. <laughs> now, that was unfortunate. So. I'm going to have to go into the folder now to find the information. So you go into the C drive and there's a folder called OSR launcher and results. And let's go, those are going to be, oh, I should have taken a picture of it, shouldn't I? Darn. CSV, overdrive, Excel. Let's see, no, I don't want CSV. Oh, balls. Sorry, I closed it. I should have looked at it. I'll have to, uh, I'll have to run it again, but I'm not going to because my brain is starting to lose the ability to focus. Let's look at the questions. You'll all see it when I do the review eventually when I actually work out what the, <laughs> so I'm actually doing. That is the trouble with a lot of technology tools. That they're very cool and they do loads and loads of different things, but learning to actually use them takes time. And also the fact that doing it in a live stream is probably not the best of ideas but you know what to expect when you come here we have a bit of fun it's, it's winding down for the weekend uh, yeah i'm not too sure where a rally is tonight good question he's been quite quiet today actually he must be deeply engrossed in his game shags the hobo says winter season is always a blur haha -ha, good evening chaps how you doing shags the hobo oh i haven't turned the keyboard on so I couldn't get rid of that bit. Uh, Giorgio did that one. 
<laughs> Mook MC says it's getting way too complicated. Back in the day, all you have to worry about is deciding if you needed to use the turbo button. And the turbo button was actually a very bizarre button because most people assume, rightly or wrongly, that the turbo button would be like, because we'd grown up, most of us, in the era of things like Knight Rider or Street Hawk or Airwolf, when you press the turbo button, you had a boost of power. So most people thought that pressing the turbo button actually made your PC faster. Whereas generally, it actually did the exact opposite. So the turbo button you pressed and it actually reduced the clock cycles. So if you're running older software on more modern chips that run at higher megahertz or higher frequency, it would slow down the processor to run those titles. You could potentially do it the other way around, possibly depending on the motherboard, so that if the turbo button was off, it would run in the slower mode and then the turbo button would speed it up. But most manufacturers sent out the PCs in the fastest possible configuration and you had to press the turbo button to actually turn down the speed. Weird. Lord Erectus says, well, it will be 150 million this week up for grabs in the lotto. Ooh. What was it Jim Carrey said recently? He said, Jim Carrey said, I think everybody should have the opportunity to be rich and famous for a while just to see that it isn't what it, you think it is. Or words to that effect. I'm paraphrasing massively there, but yeah, I think he said that as if to say like, yeah, being rich and famous is not like the golden ticket that you would believe it would to be. Right, I uh, unless there's any more dying questions, I think that's probably going to be it for tonight's stream. <coughs> I cannot think that there's anything else that I was meant to do or meant to say. I think I've covered everything. I failed to show the OSRTT tool. I managed to show the case. And I think the case actually, overall, I think was a pretty positive experience. Let me know in the comments. I'd be interested to see a little quick show of hands there or just some comments say like did you what do you think of the case be honest say you like it you don't like it or it's okay but not for me just let me know what you think i am actually interested to see what the thoughts are because when it comes to reviewing cases obviously i've got my own personal preferences so sometimes i try to get in cases which i like the look of or like the idea of and then maybe taking it apart maybe it's not quite what I expect it to be, or it's different. But I'd be interested to see what you guys think. <clears throat> Charles Ballard says, my first decent PC was a custom built 100 megahertz Pentium and the turbo button put it to maximum speed. I never turned it off in the four years I used it for regularly. Oh, nice. William Bodie says, turbo is Latin. It means more air. So I got turbo on my modern PC. You have. Dutch Jan says, not my case. Fair enough. Uh, Skystalker says, I like the case, but be better in black. I think you might be right there. Yeah. Mark Berry says, I like the case, but not in white. Fair enough. William Bodie says, I did like the case. That's okay. Uh, Charles Bonner says, I can't believe we're at over 2 hours 45 minutes. This went quick. I like that case for the most part. The front panel connectors could be relocated. <clears throat> yeah, I think the uh, the front panel connectors might be problematic for some people. I think having them at the very bottom is somewhat limiting, I think, for some people. Depending where it is. If, like, for me, if it was on here, it'd be kind of cool because it'd be kind of like easy access rather than going up to the top, but that's a very, very limited use case. Hugh says, night all, have a good week. Cheers for tuning in. Kaiser Solo says, nice case, but not for me, uh, but very current trend. Like to see it in black also. Okay. Uh, Atomic Sub says, it's a great case. It does feel like a Sky Tech, I'm sorry, a Montex Sky 2 clone though. I'm thinking that you might be right. I'm not sure if Montex actually manufacture their own cases or whether they rebrand cases which are already from, like most of the cases on the market at the moment come from maybe two or three main kind of manufacturers. I think John's Bow is one of them, possibly. Uh, John's Bow's like uh, ODM catalog 
has basically pretty much every case that has been on the market recently. So Montec might make their own, or they may make or take a John's bow design and rebadge it like a lot of others do. There's nothing wrong with that at all, but people often say, oh, this case is a copy of this. It's like, well, they're kind of, most of them are copies of the same case because they're coming from the same manufacturer just with custom tweaks. But I, I understand what you're saying. I think I do. Uh, William Bowie says I like the case. Good, thank you. Uh, Mark Berry says I like the case, but not in white. Uh, Hayden Trent says preferred it in black too. Okay. Looks like there's a, a definite push towards the case being in black. Mookie MC says I was late to the stream. I will have to rewind to see this case. Yeah, let us know what you think in the uh, in either in the chat if you rewind or later on in the Discord. Nick Barnes says the IO deal breaker for me, sadly. Fair enough. Don't have to like it, everything. That is the whole point of this. This uh, this isn't a kind of What's it called? Um, I can't think of what the word is now, but that's because I don't know what it is really. But we don't insist that you like everything we do because it's not that sort of channel. If you don't like stuff, it's, it's absolutely fine to say it. And in fact, I welcome it because then I know what you do really like. There's nothing worse. I know it's like if you're, um, if you're surrounded by people that say yes to everything, it's really hard to get anything done or to do anything correctly or right it's you always want people around you that are going to be uh questioning what you do or saying you're doing things wrong because it makes you think about what you're doing uh georgie says john's bow d31 mesh with screen uh is my favorite at the moment i can't find black on amazon or elsewhere in belgium yeah there's not much availability of the d31 as far as i know Uh, Charles says, with the connectors down low, if it were in the cubby hole where my current machine is, I'd have to bend too far to reach them. I'm 57 years old, and I try not to bend over like that these days. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Otis in the money shot. Is Lord of Rectus catching up? I think he must be. Uh, Mookie says, my observation is that Mike likes Otis best, but Dave seems to be more interested in tech and hanging out with Mike. The other kittens do not care. I am close to being correct. Um, I don't know. Otis is... Uh, He's the cuddliest, I think. Yeah, Otis is probably the most affectionate. Dave probably... Well, I don't know. Dave. It's difficult to tell because two of them look the same, so you can't really tell which one's which. That's in their collars now, make it yeah. easier. Come the summer, they'll all love us because we'll be out in the garden and they'll be... Uh, we'll, I'll be led on the grass or on the bench and they'll be lying on me. I'm filling my plant holes with fertilizer. Kaiser Solo says tell them to do it in black with frosted dark glass. They definitely do it in black. I'm not sure if it's frosted dark glass though. I think it's just a very slight tint to it. Marco says the white case is easier to build, doesn't abuse eyes during the build or looking at it. Yeah I I think RGB works better in a black case because I think black obviously absorbs light. That's the whole point of black, like a black hole. So if you have RGB in a black case, it's kind of like a good, it's like a 50-50 thing, whereas white reflects light and also enhances light. So you're getting all the light from the white case, plus you're getting RGB lighting as well. So it's all just a little bit too much. And you can quite often see that when you're watching reviews, especially for me, because I don't like to use the camera, that the camera is all blown out because there's just too much light. So yeah, I think the dark case, if you're into RGB and you've got quite a lot of it, I think a darker case suits better. Uh, Rick H says, I'm tired of black cases, been using them since the 90s. It's true. Lord Erector says that is correct, Mike. Being rich is not the always cracked up to be. I wouldn't. Well, I can't imagine it because not being a rich person, I don't really know what it was like. I can imagine it's helpful, and if there's things that you need or want or kind of you need money to do, then it's helpful. But 
I guess if you get to a point where you've got a considerable amount of money, that it's going to be where you never know if people are being legit with you, whether they're just like hanging around with you for your money or, I don't know, it must be quite a weird experience. William Boney says, I like the PC case because of the IO. I always keep my PC on a table, so much more easy to use. Okay. Lord Rector says, but I'm homeless and jobless, so money does help to get you freedom. Oh yeah, definitely. Dutch Jan says, if you are healthy, you are very rich. Yeah, I think most people would rather be uh, health rich than financial rich. Because no matter how much money you got, you can't buy health. At least not yet, anyway. No doubt that will come at some point. Uh, Nick Barnes says, love the F15 as very first case with RGB and 200, uh, 20 centimeter fans. But to be honest with you, love my white series 300 as RGB stands out more. Yeah. That's very pragmatic, Rick. Money does not destroy character, it reveals it. I think that's actually quite uh, quite apt. Yeah, I think it is. Right, I think on that bombshell, we should uh, bring things to a close. So thank you all so much for joining us on this Saturday night. Hopefully, wherever you are, especially if you're in uh, the United Kingdom, because I know more about the United Kingdom weather system, but hopefully, uh, yeah, you wake up tomorrow and Monday, then everything is where you left it, not been blown away, or absolutely soaking wet. Um, I guess in America as well, and parts of Canada, and basically all around the world, if you're experiencing like pretty nasty weather, hopefully things get better. On the bright side, we are heading, <coughs> we're getting towards the end of January, and after January is February, and then it's only a very, very short step into spring, which I, for one, cannot wait for, because I definitely need to get a little bit of sunshine. That would be great. So, thank you all very much for joining. Thank you all for your comments, your suggestions, and your contributions in terms of what you've asked for, questions and comments on the case. Very helpful for us actually doing the review as well. It's very helpful to have your input to know what people are asking so I can kind of look into those questions and see what needs to be added to the video. So that is awesome. Uh, thanks for the PayPal donations, the super chats, the memberships and all that stuff. And don't forget if you are a member or you've been gifted a membership, if you want to get um, a VIP role on a Discord, just uh, let us know your Discord name. We can do that for you. And of course, you get early access to the videos now, so make sure you enjoy those and leave any comments on them. But I think that's going to be it. Hopefully, uh, you've enjoyed the stream. If you have, smash the like button, all that usual stuff. I think that's going to wrap things up. Now my voice is going. I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully, we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. And let's uh, have a party blower to finish. That was rather unnecessary. <laughs> See you all in the next video, guys. Have a good weekend. Say bye, Calf. Bye. Let's do that.